Clap rake. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> read it right, dick. Hey, Chris is the one that wrote it. He should fucking write. He should fucking Hold sing on. it. I can't even read that shit. It's like fucking Sanskrit right there, dude. You know? <laughs> Hold on, because I don't even know what fucking language is that. I think it's Hebrew. Just Are you recording? Are you recording? Okay. I'm already recording right now. So. <laughs> okay, welcome to it, episode seven. This is episode seven, right? Yeah. Welcome to episode You're seven. You're not doing that stupid song right now, are you? Which one? The colors? Yeah. Nah, nah. Now nah, we'll do it later. We'll do it later. That so this we'll is episode seven? <laughs> episode seven of La Clica Podcast. Hello, Yo. everybody. What's up? All right. What's up? Yo. Everybody have beer? Roll yes, call. Sir. Roll Let's call. Go. Roll call. <laughs> okay. I am Chris, and right next to me is... Landon Lambo. And, um... Welcome. Uh, thank you. And, uh, <laughs> Welcome to the podcast. <laughs> I am... I am a knight. <laughs> no, um, well, let, let me give you some bars. <laughs> hey, yo, yo, yo. I am a knight. Man, talking on the mic. Phone coming through, and I'm going home. Zote, zote. Bring it home, zote. Tres flores. <laughs> All right. You know, um, that was horrible. But, uh, <laughs> no, I, I, I guess I, you could call me somebody that's, you know, very knowledgeable when it comes to music especially uh, hip hop which we're going to be talking about today mm -hmm. nice okay. and um actually we fooled you we're going to be talking about Mexican polka music <laughs> let's go, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> yeah, he's also into R&B too yeah nice um very heavy on the R&B and um shit we can go disco we can do any we can do you know I I wanted to do a four hour podcast on El De Barge oh man we can do that too I would love that <laughs> 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 yeah, we're mostly all jazz fans too and shit, dude. So yeah, it's yeah. a little different. I've known yeah, these yeah. guys forever, so okay. Chris and John on forever and let's continue with the intros. Okay, and this is Bago seventy four. And this is Joel the Kid. With a raspy voice. <laughs> raspy raspy voice. voice. This is Joel after a pack of new ports. <laughs> <laughs> and I am Rick. Come on, dude. Look at the song. So how you like the setup, dude? Nice. All oh, got it right here. A little different, nice. huh? Uh, where'd you grow up, uh, Landon? Long Beach. Yeah, mostly awesome. Long Beach. You know, I only LBC. lived in lived in uh, Vegas for a couple of years, but Long Beach is. <laughs> yeah, we got yeah. we. Our special guest is Marge Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> oh, homie. <laughs> Lisa needs braces. <laughs> okay, so moving right along, we got a special song. You know how we like to play music here. And not just any music. We got MC Boulevard, and the song is Perdóname Jefita. Hey, I forgive you, Chris. Te perdono. Gracias. Os hey, Chris, me perdonas? <laughs> <laughs> that was the one and only MC Boulevard featured in the documentary Lives in Hazard from American Me. MC Boulevard now is Perdóname Jefita. I remember you, homie. What up, <laughs> that motherfucker was singing. <laughs> yeah, that fucker stole uh, it. Then, and then <laughs> that, he has some fucking range, doesn't man, he? he, did, he did. That, that's uh, a little bit of soul, but a lot of PCP. <laughs> hey, hey, and if you remember, he was singing. He was singing. I remember you, homie, in an alley with a bunch of cholos. Remember? Yeah. Yeah. Do you think he had a teardrop on his? Okay, I want. I want. Oh yeah. I want Landon to read some of these comments on the YouTube video. <laughs> Let's go. Um, I thank God. For, wait, say, I thank God for touch my heart. I was try. Wait, I was tried getting locked up and doing drug dealing today. I got four years clean. I'm trying to read it the way he, or she. <laughs> Yeah, um, it's all fucked up. It's all fucked up. <laughs> don't, don't think I can't read. Remember, shit. this is this is East LA Ebonics. <laughs> right. I always thank God for coming in in my life. <laughs> I really love your music, MC. MC, God bless you, brother. And it is okay. Th this is this is like Garfield High School. <laughs> After Jaime Escalante <laughs> retired and <laughs> hey, hey, this knows everything <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, they learned it. They learned algebra but not fucking English, dude. Come on, give him a break. <laughs> they can't spell cat, but they can do calculus in their head. <laughs> uh, next. What else do they gotta Let's say? See. What does little little puppet gotta say? Let me see. Uh, uh, how, uh, <laughs> 
Okay, I'm, uh, MC Boulevard, I want to thank you for this song. Not too long ago, I was about to join a gang, but I listened to this song, and it made me realize how much pain I would put my mom through if I went through the... <laughs> 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 you, can't, you can't read that with a straight face, man. Hey, <laughs> you can't make this shit this up. This is for the, ro- the, the Rola, homie. La, 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 la. <laughs> thank you for the Roya, homie. <laughs> It's like uh, it's like cholo for song. Okay, that's what it it's is. It's a roll. Oh, it's okay. a roll. Okay, or tape. And for all you non-Hispanic listeners, rolla means a song. <laughs> hey, which one of these are you looking at the comments of? Um, perdóname, jefita. That's the one. The top one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look at wait, wait. Dedicated to my mamita. <laughs> 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 yeah, two trouble daughters <laughs> who are trying to change. I'm sorry. I love you. So I guess that's for her mom. Okay, <laughs> I mean it's funny because I think the song is so comedic, mm-hmm. and there's actually people that take it seriously, and that's what I think it's. They this, really, this is from the heart. You could tell, like they really like you know, that. You know what this shit reminds me of? Fucking L.A. car shows back in the nineties. Uh-huh. Remember they used to play this shit. Oh, they oh yeah, like, they still play this on Whittier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I'm cruising on Whittier Boulevard. A eh? picking up on high So my. <laughs> <laughs> my my neighbor's brother, um, shout out to Mike D. He's a he's a he's a DJ and he calls himself the Cholo DJ, and he plays this shit. Wow. Yeah, I mean like hardcore, like like, hard, hard school, like Spanish gang, Fly and gangster fucking rolas. gang straight gangster rollas, all like all of them. And does he follow with Ice T in the back? <laughs> but you know, I do notice that. Even the most hardcore thugs, whether it be black or, you know, um, Hispanic thugs, like, they all have the soft spot, yeah. especially oh, when it comes yeah. to R&B music and women. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, yeah so. they do. Dude, I remember cruising down Whittier in the Hulkster. Remember my dad's car? <laughs> oh, yeah. For the red hood and the yellow fucking paint job? Yeah. Dude, we used to roll deep in that shit on Whittier, pick uh-huh. it up on chicks, dude. <laughs> I used to cruise. So. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll, we'll play, like, music like this, and then we'll pull up. Uh-huh. Well, fucking turn it like Slater or something mm-hmm. else, dude. <laughs> <laughs> okay, for for those for those of you that don't know, Rick's father had an '83 Sunbird, '79 son, '79 hey, Sunbird, sunbird. and the Sunbird was painted half yellow. No, the 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 driver's side fender was red. Okay, the driver's side <laughs> and the hood. <laughs> And the rest of the car was yellow, right? Yep, Boulevard Nights. So, so it was forever known as the Hulk, the Hulkster, Hulk, the Hulkster. Did, yep. it have a, did it have a pearl coating on it? The inside was all uh, white, dude. <laughs> yeah, just yeah, like so. the championship belt. Oh, shit. What are you gonna do when the Hulkster <laughs> runs up on you? <laughs> oh, we had a, we had, a, we had a, the guy who was on podcast from Nemo Canonos. He used to drive it. He's a really tall, dude, and his legs always like fucking were like up on top of the fucking steering wheel man uh-huh. and he'll pull up to pick up everybody else and he'll go get him brother <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember that shit <laughs> dude and I had like a I didn't know electronics that well I fucking Chris always dropping shit dude. I have fucking clumsy motherfucker fucking that was your phone huh that was my phone good I'm glad it was enough but <laughs> my phone is protected by the new Glica sticker we have <laughs> And my OtterBox case, so I'm fine. Like, you'll figure out. Okay. You'll figure a way to break it, Dick. Oh yeah. Anybody? Okay. Uh, did anybody ever cruise Hollywood Boulevard? Eh? Yeah, we did in Hoaxer. Hell yeah. We cruised there. We even cruised fucking Downey Boulevard between Florence and fucking <laughs> oh, Firestone, dude. <laughs> oh shit! I used to cruise in my bug. Hey, surprisingly, we picked up on chicks in that <laughs> fucking I, I, car. Hey, <laughs> what ta- one time I actually, uh, <laughs> I, I used to get off the car and hop on other girls' cars <laughs> and roll with them and meet my boys later. That's some player shit right there. <laughs> hey, we used to cruise down Pacific too. Remember? Yeah, yeah. remember that. Um, now, that. now the subculture of I mean, like hip hop is kind of like it. It, it reminds me of punk rock, mm-hmm. just because it has a way of it has a certain aesthetic, it has a certain look to it, <clears throat> and and it's basically surrounded by the music. Um, and like punk rock music, it seems that hip hop has different subcultures and subgenres in the names and it's under 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 hip hop like this whole mexican shit yeah yeah you know it it it, uh, it really seems like it's one side of it mm-hmm. and then you got like 
the mumble rap now, and you got the old school hip hop, and then you got like the jazz hip hop, like us three and all that other shit. Which mumble rap? Diggable planets. Diggable planets. <laughs> <Yeah. diggable> planets. <laughs> Which mumble rap? Oh my god! <laughs> Should I look up some mumble it's, it's, rap? It's for actually you? what no, it is. No, it is, is what it I, is. I can give you a few artists. Mambo rap. Mumble rap. <laughs> mambo mambo. It's Ricky Ricardo rap. Baba Lucy. Hey Lucy. I thought you were gonna bust out with like that mambo number five. <laughs> a little bit of Lou Bega. Oh, Lou Bega. Oh, oh, Lou Bega. Oh, Lou Bega. Oh, that was that makes dude. me want to vomit. Uh, <laughs> but um, but yeah, it, you know, it's a little Uzi Vert. Little um, Uzi Vert. There's uh, Little Yachty, which is probably like the worst one out of everybody. Oh God, um, I don't know. There's a lot of bad rap now, and it's it's weird because the people who actually got skills, you know. They're not being promoted, and you know they they're starting to become underground and doing you know. Mm-hmm. Um, they're not only bigger. you think of like Kendrick Lamar and J Cole, and those are the ones that are you know actually moving units yeah, now. They, they don't even units anymore. They, you know yeah. they, they do digital sales, yeah. whatever. Well, what is it? Downloads or, or yeah, streams? Streams. streams. So YouTube they get paid streams. This, it's crazy because they actually get paid for a certain amount of streams, and I come from the era you buy the CD. Hell yeah, you know or. It's, it's, it's I still crazy. have those CDs. <laughs> we talked about it back then about the fucking Columbia House. You ever fuck with Columbia? <laughs> Columbia House? You get like uh, a PM. certain amount of t- CDs, <laughs> yeah. like a penny. Yeah. BMG, yeah, yeah. BMG yeah. era when you used to use everybody else's address. Hell yeah, <laughs> yeah. man, those were good old days, man. And you know now it's sad because it's like now the people, you know, all your mumble rappers and it fucked up the whole game. They, they really they, fucked up the whole. They Good. fucked up hip hop. Hip hop is. What do you blame it on? Yeah, hip hop definitely is not what it used to be, man. No. I, I dude, the very first song that I heard, very heard, very first hip hop song that I heard was "Bad" by <laughs> LL Cool J. Okay. And when that <laughs> shit dropped, I was like, "Holy shit!" Nobody can rap. That was that's some old school shit right there. Yeah. And that was coming from 85-year-old Joel Marquez. <laughs> <laughs> you look good for 85. You look good. <laughs> when I was your age. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me that. I used to listen to LL Cool J. <laughs> Tell me that. And wear Adidas with no laces. It was like, <laughs> Tell me that wasn't a badass album. It oh, was yeah. bad. It was actually called Bad. Yeah. yeah. I, I, have bad. That, I have that tape. Yeah. And I bought it at the Rodeo yeah. Swap Meet. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> that was the shit. That was the shit. But I, I totally agree. But, you know, good music comes in waves. It's not consistent. Right. And, you know, when when this mumble rap, you know, trap music is over, I know that we're going to get something spectacular coming in. I agree. I agree. So you know, coming. And I, I was worried at first. I'm like, man, you know, shit can get so far gone that, you know, it's, it'll be hard to repair. But, you know, I think there's still people hanging on, mm-hmm. you know, just like R&B, you know. I know it's hip hop, but just even trying to talk about R&B like it's funny because since the early 2000s they've been integrating hip hop and R&B so you know you have like a rapper featured on an R&B song yeah. it's not even R&B anymore so that's yeah. where the change came you yeah. know, you know it's crazy though that it actually there's like a full circle because rappers hip hop cats used to sample R&B mm-hmm. and all of a sudden now R&B are fucking rap, uh, sampling rappers yeah it's well I mean crazy, that, even, that even started back then with the Easy uh. and Michelle A Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, that shit dropped back in back in that day. You know, mm-hmm. that collaboration the mm-hmm. late style, nine, the late nineties, yeah. yeah, or the mid mid to early, late nineties, yeah, early what eighty nine ninety. Yeah, well, Michelle, yeah, um, she was like yeah, eighty nine ninety yeah. ninety one. Yeah, yeah, she, she had some she had some uh, solid shit though. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, you guys seen that uh, new documentary or that that little the Dr. Dre is it the Dr. Dre doc- documentary? It's it's her. It's Michelle talking about her story. Oh, you know they they have a lifetime movie. You know, yeah, that, that one. That one. Fucked that's up lifetime movies. Yeah, that's what I'm <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Lifetime. <laughs> lifetime. <laughs> lifetime. <laughs> Fucking up. Uh, I don't know if you guys ever seen. I think maybe that was VH1. But did you guys ever see when they did Michael Jackson? They had Flex. Paul the, Pastor Flex. No, no, no. Oh, Flex uh, Alexander. He's <laughs> that uh, the tall, dark skinned cat playing Michael Jackson. Oh yeah, I did. I did. Uh, that yep. was that was that was horrible. Like, what the? <laughs> you had a, his name is. <laughs> Oh, it's man, like yes, it's yeah. like me playing Joel. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> and I, I think I, I think I seen it, and um, I think um, Ron Howard played the later years um, Michael Jackson. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Didn't you play Richie Valens also at one point? <laughs> so Opie uh, from 
<laughs> from Mayberry played uh <laughs> Richie Fallon. <laughs> Michael, the, the later years Michael Jackson <laughs> hey but I even like with hip hip hop you just don't have what you had back in the uh, late, but everybody, late 80s everybody early, says early that though. 90s you know we say that because that was our generation that's the time we grow in but you got older cats that were into like uh, African Barbada and Fuck Master Flex mm-hmm. and they say well it's not like that anymore I mean this is the this uh, this music but, gives us you know nostalgia, but you know. But, you, but what I'm saying is that you don't have hip hop artists today like you did back in the day. Like say for instance, there there's nobody today that's memorable in my mind. Kendrick at, Lamar. At, no, that's the only one no. left. Though, I mean, man. there's, there's here's not the that thing, many out there. and I'll compare it to like say guitarists. Okay, look at all the guitarists from you know the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. Right. I I think the 90s was the last era of you know great fucking rock and roll music and everything that encompasses that right you don't have any musicians nowadays that are memorable like in those uh you know eras yeah. you know and i think hip-hop has gone that route too i like um what's his face what's that dude's name again drake that mm-hmm. guy I'm sorry, I don't give two shits about that guy. Two shits. I, I, think, he's, I think he sucks. Two shits. You know, it's funny. You know? He, he actually was better back in 2009, 2010 yeah, when he, he first came started. out. Like, he yeah. had some punchlines mm-hmm. and bars, but, yeah. you know, he started to get super commercialized. And, yeah. You know, and he started singing. Kind of yeah. like, he's you know, like oh, Nicki, Nima- uh, Nicki Minaj. Yeah. Her underground shit was fucking slamming. It was fucking hot. It's, I think yeah. once you're forced to put out stuff, it kind of deteriorates. It, yeah, right? it I think it's the quality. Quality. At least the quality, mm-hmm. you know? But it's something that I discussed in the, in the last podcast where there was a time, in like, between, like, 1996 to, like, the mid-2000s where, like, every single genre of music was really good. Everybody was producing quality music. I, I, man, yeah. I mean, you think about, um, like... Like we're talking about Diggable Planets, yeah, dude. Mm-hmm. When they came out, and then um, you you had you had Nirvana, you had all these out, all these great artists coming out all at once, and they're from different genres. And, Portis had, and they all sounded different back yeah. then. Everybody sounded different. There wasn't such thing as biting. You know, you had to have your own style. Yeah, and now yeah, yeah, everybody, unique. everybody yeah. sounds like everybody. Yeah, Every yeah, beat everybody on the radio sounds, sounds the yep. same. Mm-hmm. same, but you still shit. have people bobbing to it like it's a new beat. It's weird. It's almost like they force feed you music, yeah. and, and you know you're forced to listen to it. Yeah, and it's like. Like, you know, I don't know, man. I, my opinion, I, a lot of hip-hop artists, has, has, and it's just, it was happening in, you know, in our generation when we're growing up. All this sampling music from other, you know, artists, it just doesn't sit but well that's, with But that's what they do. I mean, well, that, that, that was, yeah. the, that's, the, that's the blueprint of hip-hop, though, is sampling. I yeah. Mean, it I, started with sampling, and it's that's just what it is. It's like, it's mean, like having hip-hop. It's like somebody saying, man, you don't have to rock, okay, punk, metal, whatever. There's always a guitar. You know, you had to have the guitar. You can't have something else. You can't go acoustic with metal. So actually, but like, it happened, like, but it, when it started, it wasn't acoustic. And but you know, sampling. When, the sampling there had to be in the beginning of rap. Had, there was sampling. That was like how it started. When, yeah. when you have Ja Rule sampling Strange Love by Depeche Mode in one of his <laughs> oh. songs, it's like, come on, dude. <laughs> See, really? There's people that fuck it up. You know? <laughs> you know, they're you gotta try something, you gotta, they you gotta try something different. At yeah, least. dude. Or, you know, dude, Dr. Dre made up some sick ass beats. Oh, dude, I sampled you fucking. Know? Okay, okay, I sampled uh, flushing toilets <laughs> when I was learning how to do music. <laughs> Serious shit. Mm-hmm. I, I, got a, I got a riddle for Joel. What has two thumbs and is gonna see Morrissey tomorrow? Uh, this guy. Sorry. I had to say, I'm, like, I'm excited about it. Nobody, and nobody cares. And nobody cares. <laughs> nobody <laughs> fucking gives a shit. <laughs> nobody gives a shit. I don't know. I just, I just think too much of it nowadays is like all auto tune and oh yeah, everything yeah. sampled and you have to have it's the lack uh, Tony Braxton featuring or yeah, you know it has uh, to be a feature. Yeah, yeah, Mary J Blige featuring. And mm-hmm. It's like okay, I know I'm gonna, I, this doesn't I, sit well with me. I know I'm gonna get my ass whooped by every fucking music producer, quote unquote music producer out there, but I think it's lack of education on music composition, prefabricated beats available to you in prefabricated loops and that's why all the music sounds the same well you know what people get mad at me for this too but the starting of the death of hip-hop would probably be fruity loops <laughs> yes. yeah. everybody yeah. everybody can make a beat yeah. and, you know yeah. at the end of the day like there's no more super producers yeah. like okay there was your timberlands there's your neptunes there yeah. were your swiss beats yeah. there were your dr dre's and you yeah, know, Rock P- Wilders P- and Little. P- T- yeah, that's one Tim- thing I noticed. And nobody wants to pay their fucking rates. What was the ne- <laughs> yeah. Neptunes was like... 100000 like 150000 uh, a beat. Like, yeah, like, like uh, I think they were like charging something like $30,000 a half hour. 
That's crazy. Or man. some shit like that. But for the most part, you were almost guaranteed a hit. Yeah. 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 You yeah. know, yeah. Timberland came out some sick ass beats. Yeah. Man. Sick. And he's still doing it to sick. this day. Yeah. Still doing shit. Sick beats, yeah. man. Sick. And it's sad to see, like, you know, the producers, like, they, he has an Instagram now. And you watching him using this new shit, like the machine and stuff like that. And I know it took time for him to kind of adapt and learn how to use the, mm-hmm. the new stuff. Right. You know, but at least he's still doing it. And yeah. it's, it's just still, I, I think within the next year or two, he's going to have some, some shit out there. But please get back to super producers because. Yeah, exactly. These, he used to use the ASR-10, yeah. actually. He used to use the ASR-10, mm-hmm. which was one of, the, one of the tightest fucking samplers that I actually started with. Mm-hmm. It was him, if you, um, like, Kanye used ASR-10, Muggs used ASR-10, Alchemist, mm-hmm. um, Evidence, they all use that shit, man. Mm-hmm. It, it used to fuck with your music. Like, you couldn't make music like that with something else. Yeah, and then there's like another... like the 808. There's, yeah. another, there's another piece of machinery, the SP-1200. The SP-1200. Mm-hmm. DJ the, Quick, the, Manny yeah, Fresh, yeah, all yeah. them cats were using that. The MPC-3000, the yeah. one that I use. And yeah. see, it's you know... Like, that's, that's like the... That's the blueprint of hip-hop is those samplers. That's yeah. what started hip-hop. Yeah, Because if it wasn't for those machines, <sighs> it wouldn't be what we heard when we started listening to. Right. And, and you know what's funny is it wasn't intended for those purposes of hip-hop. It was just a drum machine so you could practice. Mm-hmm. And... People use primitive tools to get your to, to create sometimes. Just like like you said, they didn't have music for rap back then, so they used samples of other music. Mm. Like you listen to the old Run DMC shit, mm. and they're sampling electric guitars, yeah, and it was just drum machines. And they, didn't, they didn't have a drummer to come into the studio. You know? Yeah, they, they, they used they, what they had. You know, they yeah. had records. But I think you know, even like Prince was even using oh, yeah. drum machines mm-hmm. back in the early 80s and Fuck yeah. you know and that 777 you know the time mm-hmm. <laughs> you know that sick ass shit right there but he was using the drum machines for the hi-hats yeah. and so it's it's embedded in there for you know for everybody to listen to and mm-hmm. they, they actually adapted from it I mean yeah. hip hop hip hop influenced a lot of genres actually mm-hmm. you know it, just, the, just the gear alone there wouldn't be that much house music because they use the same fucking instruments mm-hmm. I mean you had the SP-1200 that was like the the machine to use back in the eighties. Mm-hmm. The then Moog, the, the Moog. You had the fucking then the MP the MP sixty came out. Mm-hmm. That blew everybody away too. So it it evolved from that to other sampling machines. The ASR ten came out. Mm-hmm. You had the Roland, the eight hundred eight. Mm-hmm. Also was one of the big, and that was actually not just hip hop. It had it had house. Mm-hmm. Everybody used that fucking machine right there. You know, back um fucking uh, Arabian Prince um. Egyptian lover use an eight oh eight. Everybody, I mean, fucking wrecking crew, you know, would have been it wouldn't have been without that shit right there. Right. <clears throat> Cause I mean, they wanted the people to bump their music in their cars and they didn't want that the, mm. they wanted that boom. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that boom. bass, that's the nine oh nine. Nothing but like eight oh eight, nine oh nine, they nothing nothing bumps like that. Hell no. You can't duplicate it. They yeah. try to duplicate it on, on fruity loops. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> it I'm work. not gonna lie, I had fruity loops back when I was in ninth grade. But you evolve, but yeah. they actually made free loops something that people use. And you know, I remember at one point in time you kind of be ashamed to use free loops. Like, what do you use to make your beats? Everybody use reason, but <laughs> like I got free loops because <laughs> <laughs> it was free. Yeah, it was free. You know, especially you know, find a good crack version too. Did anybody have Parappa the rapper? I had that <laughs> PlayStation. <laughs> I had that. <laughs> hey, what was that other? Oh, remember, there's another PlayStation Pro you can make your own music. Yeah, um, uh, it's MTV. I still yeah, re- I still remember MTV that Music song. Creator. Yeah. Remember we used that fucking around it. <laughs> yeah, I still remember that rap song from Par Rapper the Rapper. Oh, uh, you know it. Say, how it, goes, say it. How does it remember? It goes kick. Punch, it's all in the mind. If you want to test me, I'm sure you'll find that the things I'll teach you, I'll show to beat you. Nevertheless, you get admission for teaching. Now kick. Kick. Punch. Wow. Punch. Wow. <laughs> you really remember that? Shout out. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Parappa the old rapper. <laughs> Props to that. Parappa, that Parappa the rapper sing by <laughs> MC <laughs> Marge Simpson. <laughs> hey, but we got a new sponsor. We got a new sponsor. We always heard a sponsor. Sucrets. <laughs> <laughs> and halls <laughs> and even, even, Cola. <laughs> and you know it's crazy that even even r&b used all those instruments because oh, hip-hop yeah. producers were actually <laughs> producing r&b pet cats and all did like, you ever okay, see look that at, look at r, r kelly yeah teddy oh. riley teddy oh, riley was uh, uh, timmy I mean, jimmy jam and terry lewis was yeah. talking about using um the drum machines and they were 100 percent drum machines no drummers in the, in the no. sessions and you didn't need them yeah you didn't need them because it's it's 
But hip hop has a very humbling beginning with their instruments. You know, you didn't, you didn't, you know, it was just a cat with, you know, a couple hundred dollars that, or maybe somebody borrow some money to buy that drum machine because they were like shit we need to make music man you know how to rap yeah all right fuck it look i'm gonna grab this fucking machine mm -hmm. i'm gonna sample my shit i got a shitload of records they found out how to sample and how to sequence how to put all that shit together make a new song for make them. a new song loop that bitch and all you have to do is loop it and fools are like fuck it it's on you got bars boom there it is mm -hmm. they had a little four track they added that shit to it done that's mm -hmm. all they needed they didn't have to have a bass they didn't have to call some, hey man, you know how to play the drums? No, they didn't need that. That's all they needed. So yeah. fucking drum Everything machine. was right there. You know, yeah. It was all laid out very simply. Yeah. It's, it's like right here, like right here in this room. You know what I'm saying? Like all they needed, you know, they didn't need a big fucking studio. You know, you got to think about it. Like imagine being there within, you know, in that time frame where shit was still fresh and new. You know, you're not jaded by it. No one's corrupted, you know, by what we got now. It's just everything's new. Mm -hmm. You know, I couldn't imagine being a producer, you know, with an SP-1200 back in 1990 when you still can create something new, a new sound. I feel like everything has almost been done already. So that's yeah. why everybody's fucking around and regurgitating old shit. You know, you'll take people who's taking a Tony, Tony, Tony track, like Ty Dolla Sign got a song out, and they're sampling Tony, Tony, Tony. Wow. And then this is like the third time I've heard the same song being sampled. <laughs> Fuck. Um, Are you and it's just yeah. like, oh yeah. He's heard sampling some Mexican music, dude. You know what? Yeah, there is. Then is there? The, yeah. MC Boulevard, right here. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> I remember you, homie. Yeah, but, there's um, people that actually sample like Tigres and Norte and Bookies yeah. and all that. Actually, I done too. So I know a lot of producers that use it, and they chop it to where you can't even recognize it sometimes. Yeah, you know? I used to walk around recording like just different sounds on the street, dude. Yeah. Fucking bus taking off, shit like that. And I'll, uh -huh. I'll take out fucking mids and put reverb on it and compress it and make it into an actual fucking like a drum beat dude mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, and Rick used to fucking sample himself taking a shit <laughs> I, I, I did it was like it was it was mm, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and that would sound better than most of the shit out today. <laughs> I bet you it does. What, what, it do, does. You, what do you call that one? That one's called elote. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? There's one, there's one thing I do want to mention though. Like be, being, you know, a black man, and then you know, growing up around a lot of you know Hispanic people, it's it's amazing to me how close, as far as music goes, mm -hmm. how close everything is tightly knit. We were just talking about. Um, the gangsters. Um, there's another name for them. Cholo. The, like, yeah, it's like Cholo. It's like you know. Okay, you know all the oldies. Yeah. yeah. Um, you have your uh, I do love. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. you know black people and Hispanic people. It ties us together. The like Art yeah. LeBeau, motherfucking Art LeBeau, oh, yeah. Yeah, ties yeah, us yeah. together. <laughs> Shark, yeah. Like cause motherfucking you, Huggy Boy. <laughs> <laughs> No, but like you really think about I, the the same music that I listen to, all the, the them oldies like sitting, like all yeah, that high shit, C, like you remember, high, C? high C, yeah, yeah Delphonics, yeah, man, all of that, like one do, mm -hmm. all yeah, that shit, yep. uh, natural high, yeah, like yeah, Bloodstone, Bloodstone, <laughs> yeah. ties it, all of us together. It's crazy because Perdona Chicano, me, huh? <laughs> 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 it's like um. I don't know. It just it was, I was talking about it uh, with some people at the at the job. Mm -hmm. So it's it's amazing how that ties us all together because I can sit up there and listen to the same shit, have the same feel, yeah. same you know emotion towards the same music. And it's, some, it's, it's some shit that we heard, we all heard in the hood. Yeah, yep. you know, we yeah. all had the same some record. form or another. Word. We heard it. We Word. all had the same records. <laughs> my my next door neighbor used to have the same records my uncle had. You know, mm -hmm. different races, and we all just mended together somehow. We all, and we are related, man. No matter what, and we all grew up in the same era. And then we we found hip hop. Mm -hmm. it's, it's because it's so because we use those samples. You know, we like fuck it. Let's use those samples. Yeah. and make hip hop, and mm -hmm. they just evolved. Music is a great equalizer. You become friends with somebody because they like the same music. You know, and then you get that bond, and you get to these big gatherings. Either it's like a picnic or mm -hmm. a concert, or or, or or like somebody like a, like a like a dance whatever extravaganza and you get people together you go with certain girls because you like the same music mm -hmm. you know you go with certain guys you like because they like the same music it's a very it's it's a really big equalizer <clears throat> it's like an even playing field you know mm -hmm. yeah yeah your job or your <sighs> skills don't matter at the moment because of this music well like me and you when we met yeah we did the completely different thing but when we found out you were like music and you liked all this shit like oh fuck what's up like this is why we're sitting here right now yeah it wasn't for us liking music 
Yeah, if mm-hmm. it, I think it was like Porter said they got us together. Yeah, some, like, some and uh, tri- I we're talking about trip hop. And I introduced this cat to uh, Theory Corporation. Yes, um, and he didn't know who they were, and I'm like, hey, listen to this shit. It's like hip hop instrumental shit, but mm-hmm. you know, it's just straight instrumental. It's and not hip hop, you know, like straight hard hardcore shit with raps and shit. But it's it's the instrumental, but it's all instrumental. It's kind of like funk jazz shit, right, right, right. It, it, it's like it, electronic it, shit. So it just mended together. Mm-hmm. It uh, it makes um, hip hop lounge Jamaican music, and I'm not talking regular like island music. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then um, it, all these other genres, and it was like oh, a British guy and a Colombian guy mm-hmm. making all this music. Yeah. Then, like I said, those are two. Those are two different cultures, right there. Yeah, yeah. they had bossa co- nova in that bitch. Yeah, yeah, they did a lot of bossa nova with that. Okay, and, fucking and it, it's nova. just it's just like a web that made this beautiful palette. And that was that run. There was two thousands when all that happened. Yeah, there was a lot of groups coming around just doing instrumentals, mm-hmm. like great crossovers, like Stereo MC's um, DJ Kicks album. Oh yeah, yeah, you know, just great shit. DJ, oh yeah, just say like Stereo MCs. Like. Stereo MCs. <laughs> if I made a top one hundred list, Stereo MCs, the DJ Kicks would would, would fucking right in the middle. What about Nightmares on Wax? Nightmares on Wax. Yeah, those are like those that era where it was a lot of shit, and then from that happened the future zone. Actually, a lot of what was influenced by DJ Shadows yeah. introducing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, DJ Shadows <laughs> introducing, but before him, there was the Future Sound of Jazz yeah. Volume Two. Yeah, you and know, Future Sound of London. The future sound of London, yeah. There was a lot of that era coming. See, it was it was a mixture of um, hip hop. Like hip hop is like a tree, man. Like it it, 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 it branches really out, branches on so many genres, man. And it, it just touches, and, and that's where the equalizer is. I mean, there there's a common <coughs> root is hip hop. Just like how we're talking about jazz, jazz yeah. is like the blueprint of everything. Oh yeah. If if it wasn't for jazz, it wouldn't be fucking Black Sabbath. No. And if it wasn't for jazz, it wouldn't be hip hop. Mm-hmm. From all the samples, uh, like jazz, like legitimately is the only music made in america yeah is it yeah it is even only. fucking rock and roll came from canada and country music came from wherever the fuck knows <laughs> but it wasn't Either american way. music no, jazz so is the only american New music Orleans, in the congo square like like even hip hop started somewhere else well there's a little you know there's, it, a, debate it, 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 there's a debate about it about it it's yeah. a debate it's a debate it's like something we could talk for like four hours about just that Luckily, so, we're on, we're luckily we're on a podcast that we. So can who do actually that. who actually wrote the first rap song? Blondie. It was Blondie, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> Rapture. Would they be the no, first man. mainstream on, rap? Rapture. Yeah. Rapture. It's Rapture. Well, no, no. Yeah. That, that she, was credit. She, no, I, I think it. I, I think it's, no, no, no. There was there was is. rap. There well, was yeah, rap. The, the Sugar Hill Gang. Started, rap started like in seventy, early yeah, 70, well, 70, well, 71, yeah. 73. There was tapes out that. But when what year did Rapture come out? Rock, I think Blondie was Blondie's 70s. been around since well, see, the seventies. Yeah, yeah, I think Rapture came out in what eighty one. Yeah, yeah. See, but then Sugar Hill Gang came out eighty. I mean seventy nine. Yeah. 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 Before, well, everybody up. always talks about uh, yeah. talks about Sugar yeah, Hill yeah, Gang seventy nine. Wiki- Wiki- Wikipedia. I was shit. more. I was more into the old shit, the Cold Crush Four, and all that shit. Okay. There was tapes out there in the seventies. There were. I seen 74, the special four seventy five. There's a lot of hip hop, but it never made it to there because record companies didn't believe in that shit, man. It was seriously underground. People were just passing tapes. You know, you got the first five and all those actually doing tapes. And then when Sugar Hill came out, a lot of people hated it because it wasn't really hip hop. You know, it was more, it was hip hop, but it wasn't the hip hop that was already out because it was more hardcore drums, low, like rappers. I mean, fucking, it, they straight bit the rap from Kaz. You know what I'm saying? They they straight they straight bit that fool's rap on fucking Sugar Hill Gang, man. Mm-hmm. And Kaz has been around for the longest time before it actually came out. Okay, where do you think hip hop started? Where I believe it could start in New York. I believe you know? too. It okay. has to be. It, it, there were so many roots from the Bronx. Man. Now let me ask you something. What came first, hip hop or rap? Hip hop is pretty much evolves from just the genre from graffiti. Graffiti was before. Actually, no, it was around the same time, early seventies. People were already bombing on the bus on the on the subways, subways in New York, yeah. early seventies, actually late sixties. So you had those guys doing graffiti. You had Africa Bombada fucking playing shows. You had Cool Herc doing shit. Yeah, but these are like underground shows yeah. too, like little flyers they'll give out and people yeah. go to these little parties. Yeah, so there was these all, are, all these, these are people. block parties on the tenements. Yeah, there was people back then doing that in the beginning already before the word even hip hop came out. So yeah. the the whole hip hop <laughs> thing was because of the disco part. There was there was like clubs right there was clubs out there in in, uh, in in Manhattan and all those places the high end spots and they used to say they they didn't allow kids that used to break dance in there so they used to be like go out there go get out of here and go to the hippity hip hop shit hippity hip hippity <laughs> hip go no hippity hip 
<laughs> so then from there they were like it became hip hop yeah and it's funny how disco funded the start of like legit hip hop because yeah. there was a lady named Sylvia and she sung a song something about like a pillow talk song and it was a hit in the 70s yeah and it was her money that, you know, she found a Sugar Hill gang, you know, and she was looking for rappers and I guess word got out and she knew that shit was going on in, you know, in the she streets. Banked on it. Yeah, and in the hood in New York and found a way to make money from it. And from there it really grew, but it really started from her and her disco yeah. you know, money. So it's funny. Hey, what, what, so, whatever whatever happened whatever happened to Tongue Twister. <laughs> like Twister? Yeah. No, no. Yeah, the tongue twister. <laughs> yeah. Tongue twister. <laughs> Don't twist that. <laughs> There's a lot of people. You remember that one, dude? <laughs> I'm just like, what? Okay. <laughs> you no, know, they got lost. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm thinking about like it just kind of popped in my head. But I had a conversation today too about like the top. Uh, well, we go. I go back to that. Let's, I want to see about the blondie shit. Okay, okay. Forget about the long, blondie shit. What I know about rap. Rap was an old '60s term, it's and rapping. it meant to talk. Yeah, just a talk. Yeah, yeah. rapping to that girl. Was so it's still, it still means. It started to talk. in the. Actually, yeah, there, I know, but was, it, yeah. It, that was like a, that there was, like was a, jazz singers that actually 60. said yeah. rap shit. Like they, there was out there. There yeah. were people rapping, More but poetic. it wasn't hip hop. It wasn't like the term hip hop came in the '70s though. But there was already rapping. Yeah, they were they were spitting bars. Yeah, back yeah, then, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's guys who are DJs or you know on the radio stations. That you know hosted shows and they had their little gimmick. Hey, we're going down to the station and come through see this chick and we're gonna go get this flick and blah blah. blah you know and like yeah. that's them talking. Even Louis Armstrong was fucking rapping. <laughs> yeah, you know there was people he was actually saying rhymes. And then Muhammad it, Ali was fucking saying it rhymes. rhymes. Yep, and even the bebop. You yeah, know the, the bebop, 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 scatting. You know scatting me so many different things now. But, 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 <laughs> but, but <laughs> the actual culture. <laughs> I'm gonna, gonna scat on your back. <laughs> This podcast is now (laughs) NC-17. But I believe like the whole culture started in the 70s because there was everything. I mean, there was already graffiti already in the buses. I mean, in in the the subways. There was already B-boys. There was already people breakdancing. There's already people rapping. There's already people DJing. So when they all got together, they re- they created that scene. They created it in the parks. You know, Cool Herc is pretty much the godfather. Man. Okay, okay. Started. So let's let let's let's clear it up. Rap is music. No, no, no. no, 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 no oh, you, mean, you mean the part of it? Okay, rap rap is rap is music. Yeah. Hip hop is the culture. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 the it's it's the b boys. Yeah. It's the graffiti. The it's the music. Yeah. It's everything all into one package. Mm-hmm. It's a four elements. Yeah. That's why the Blondie not, thing. Not, I'm not, I'm not, not, like not the to Blondie educate, thing. but for my own understanding of it. Blondie was just pretty much a girl that was hanging around um, Fat Five Freddy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then she came around and it's said, It's mentioned you know in the song. Yeah, she kicked it with them. Because, see, what happened was Alfred Bambara used to go to Manhattan and spin his shit. And then they were like, who is this fool? Oh, shit, this fool's playing some gold shit. Blondie was around that era. So then she got influenced by it. So when she made her album, she made it with that and started rapping to it. But it was she was just the one that got lucky, who had a deal, and said, I'm going to fuck with it. Yeah. she made it. Yeah. But it was already around. It's still, to me, in my mind, the dumbest fucking lyrics I've ever heard on a song. <laughs> you know, Tina Marie actually rapped in a song, too, and she actually spit. <laughs> she was the only white, uh, yeah, yeah, the white yeah. girl. But. Did she get scat on? <laughs> <laughs> I think Rick James did it. So. <laughs> if anybody would do it, it'd be Rick James. <laughs> yeah. Dude, Before uh, Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I learned my uh, my rap and hip-hop history from that show, The Get Down. Oh. oh that was yeah. pretty fucking yeah, tight. Yeah. And everything is the same about this guy. Yeah, it made sense, you know. It, it makes sense. Yeah. You need to get downstairs and leave the podcast. <laughs> 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 it actually was pretty close it yeah. got pretty close to it man it is it was good it actually got me really interested yeah. in it dude I mean it, it before did. I just like my knowledge was fucking the what are the fat boys and mm-hmm. that's <laughs> it <laughs> what's the last uh, hip hop CDs you guys bought or music actually, I actually spent money on um <laughs> 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 Damn that's the, a, Mar- you know, the, the Marshall Mathers EP A uh, Good Kid Mad City Kendrick Lamar Is the last one I bought You know where I bought mine man? At Goodwill I bought the Jay Z <laughs> The Blueprint Was at a Goodwill Oh yeah About uh, two months ago mm-hmm. I was in there uh, The only time I go to Goodwill Is to buy music I go and look for records And I figured Fuck let me go see What they have in the, in the CD section mm-hmm. And they have the Blueprint so I bought it for what Two bucks <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I came up Yeah I, The last two CDs I bought At Amoeba 
because you know it's more or less one of those spots that you can just Hell you know yeah. find some vintage shit. A lot of shit. Uh, recently too, I picked him up. Uh, MC Shy D got to be tough, Ooh. and uh, Dana Dane. Wow. Uh, what? I picked that shit up. Dana Dane. Dana Dane. We're fine. That was a classic right there. Yeah. That was. I just bought the new Wu Tang, dude. Ooh. It's pretty fucking bad. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Been, dude, I'm, about to, I'm about to yeah. go buy that real quick. Yeah, I gotta go this week. I I, I, I always said by. that I always said that uh, the West Coast rap, you know, and, and when they divided it back in the '90s, I said the West Coast has the beats, but the fucking East Coast had the bars. They had the lyrics. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the thing then, is, it's like okay, even just boil it down to the argument that Tupac and the the Biggie. You know, argument. You know, it's it's weird to me because Tupac put out a lot more records oh, yeah. than Biggie did, oh, yeah, yeah. but the the little small amount that Biggie put out, man, his <laughs> wordplay, his, his yeah. delivery. But then again, Tupac has so many different layers. It's hard to really compare the two, in, in my opinion. Yeah. You absolutely can't. You can't compare Tupac to Biggie. That's like comparing Coca Cola to battery acid. You know? <laughs> I don't think there's a better. They're just they're both great on, on their respective levels. Mm-hmm. Exactly, exactly. Um I I like I like the, the gimme the loot. That's one of my Yeah, favorite. give it a loot. Yeah. yeah. That's one of one of my favorite Biggie songs and <clears throat> like Tupac, he was just a different beast. I yeah. mean like you can't compare Tupac to anyone. Yeah, you know, there's some people that that get out there and they they create their own lane. You know, everybody's on the the 105 and they hop on the 91 and you know create their own lane. And it's and then just to talk of the, the top five, it's really hard because to me it's hard because there's mainstream top five. There's your underground top five. You know, you can't mix mainstream. I can't put Ludacris in the same. You know, rock him. <laughs> yeah, you, it's, it's it's really hard. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean yeah. to to do that. You know, which, so which I think my top. One of my top fives is Rakim. Mm-hmm. One of my top five. It, it is Rakim. It's got to be on that, that level. Mm-hmm. There's one nobody of, that could touch that for me. One of my top fives is Eric Sermon. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. EPMD was my shit, too, man. Uh, right, right. Pete yeah, Rock. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm going to go a little, like, left. I'm going to go Andre 3000. Ooh. Okay. His, okay. His, you, his, you, hey, you what got about there. You got there, Speaker Box, Love Below is one of my fucking favorite albums. Yeah. AT Aliens was my favorite album. AT Aliens. I like Stank On You, too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Stank yeah. On You. I got to give it out to uh, MC like- Boulevard. <laughs> 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 What, what my favorite part about Speaker Box and Love Below is they're two separate albums. Yeah. Most definitely. And they they sounded completely different from each other. And they always had, they had different, every album was different. Yeah. They had Did a concept. They had a concept every time they made one, man. It's Did you just, see that documentary on like the whole Atlanta sound? The Organized Noise? Oh, yeah. yeah. I did. Oh, I yeah, loved yeah, it. That shit loved is nice. Yeah. Shit. They were in that fucking basement of a fucking house yeah. and they were just making, making music. Making shit. Dude. And they, people live in that basement Hell and yeah. just cranking out, you know, that's when they had the, I don't know if they had SP 1200, but they had something yeah. where they're making beats on. The MP. Yeah. The MPC. I think it was the MP. I don't know. Yeah. I, I, wrong, think it was I think it was an MPC 2000. Probably. Yeah, it was, amp- it was something fucking very primitive. Yeah. But, but they were making such great music. And like now. I said, all you needed was that. All you needed was a Bach, a fucking MP. That's all you needed. Or SP-1200. You could do so much shit with that, man. <clears throat> and a, and a fucking amazing. $20 Casio keyboard. All you need, seriously. <laughs> yep. All you need melodies. is records. All you need is records and an SP or MP. Yeah. And you can make hits. And that's what uh, Dr. Dre did. Yeah. That's all he did. Yeah, every hip hop producer, that's all. You know, you got the premieres. You got the fucking... You got the premieres. You got the um, P-Rocks. You know, you got the Marley Mar out there. You know, those motherfuckers. All they had is a fucking box, man. It's mm-hmm. a fucking SP-1200 or an MP. And classics came out of there, man. And you think about, like, sampling. You think about Jay Dilla, too. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's, yeah, that's one of my top. Yeah, producers, yeah. yeah. What, what separates Dr. Dre and even, like, young Dr. Dre from these producers coming out here, like the producers of, like, Little Uzi Vert or Little Yachty, Who? is Dr. Dre... <laughs> Was a bona fide, you know, music lover. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He yeah. loved music. Roy Ayers and all them. Yeah. Yeah, he likes. He, he loved yeah. it. Yeah. He's an Roy encyclopedia Ayers. of musical knowledge. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's what happens when you spin records, man. Yeah, yeah but but I, I'm just saying, like. He knew his shit. He yeah. knew what was yeah. good. He knew what there, sold. There's, he there's knew what people, was going to hit the there's streets. There's people out there that, okay, I do this for fun. I do this for fucking SoundCloud likes. Mm-hmm. And there's people out there that I do for music. Mm-hmm. Like, I love music more. I love pussy kind of fucking vibe, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, they can't think of anything else but to do. They can't go to sleep 
until they got until they laid that beat down until they mm-hmm. spit those bars. Yeah, he was and dedicated. When you, when you get when you get to like like these new trap music artists, and I'm not you know what? <laughs> go back to that trap. Go shit, back man. to that. <laughs> hey, I know it's your favorite subject. I know it's not, your favorite subject. Uh, these uh, guys, he's but, lying. But going lying. going going back to that, only thing I can remember. It trap. seems like okay, maybe it's my generation because I grew up punk rock. And I grew up grindcore, and with that, like, we didn't think about being famous. We didn't. It, it wasn't an option. It wasn't an option getting a record deal, because this wasn't the music that was played on the radio. Like you had to go out there to a backyard and fucking 18th Street fucking neighborhoods. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you fucking you went out there and you fucking played your fucking ass off. And there's a good chance by going to your car, you're gonna get your ass kicked. There was like a ninety percent chance that was gonna happen, and that's and that's the kind of love that you know that that of music that I possess, and that's what I saw in Dr. Dre's music, and that's what I saw in all the music that came out of the '90s, all the hip hop. You could tell, like, you could tell when a quality product comes out. Mm-hmm. You could tell when love is being put into something. It's mixed different, you know. Yeah, yeah it, it just it just it has more passion, and it doesn't have to have. It could be a simple beat. You know, and with this mu- new music, it's like music for SoundCloud likes. But back and then, it's not I, music I, there for was, love. There was more soul in music back then. Right? Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Like but you had why? the bass lines. Now you just had a bass drum. That's all you hear. I, 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 I don't bass know, drum in the fucking why. snare. Boom. That's it. Mm-hmm. And that's all you hear now. Back then, man, people actually looked for samples that would hit the fucker's heart. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, people were battling to see who came up with the most rarest fucking song sample. People used to spend thousands of dollars on a fucking record. Very obscure shit that nobody has heard. Yeah. And they knew that when they fucking mixed it and sampled it and threw it together, people were going to fucking dig it. And and that's what Pete Rock did. Right. Yeah. Premier, Jay Dilla. He had the most obscure samples, man, that nobody fucking knew about, and he made this fucker's classic. He dug deep in them crates, yeah. like there's like you know it's crate diggers, but he dug deep. Yeah. Like my mom would play certain songs that, you know, let's just say Anita Baker, right? Yeah. My mom would play some stuff off of Anita Baker album. It wouldn't even be the lead single. It wouldn't even be your secondary single. It's like a deep track. The yeah, B-side. yeah. It wouldn't even be. It'd be like a track that's like somewhere hidden, you know, or some. It's just man, I don't know. It's he, yeah. People, man, are just they crate diggers, and they can really dig and find shit, even if it's the smallest sound, even yeah. if it's a. And I do that too, man. I I actually go out and dig. I'm a I'm one of those guys, man. Okay. I'm a digger. I'm actually out there in the middle of the fucking day, when I could be at home watching TV or doing other shit. I'm out there digging, going to record stores, mm-hmm. digging for that rare album that nobody has ever heard. Sometimes I buy it off the album cover. Mm-hmm. And I go home, I play it, and I hear the craziest sample, and I just sample it. And that's the kind of shit that, back in the 90s, that's the fools I used to do. You know, you got the P-Rocks out there that, and you got Mugs from Cypress Hill that used to do that shit. Yeah. You know, you got a lot of producers in the 90s, that, that was their hunt, to find that rare sample. Right. That made the hits <laughs> that, people, that obscure yeah, yeah that, like Lars Professor was known you know he was one oh, of yeah. how, many, how, much, yeah. how many how much how many hours of music you have to listen to to find that one aha shit yeah. and, and you can't just like fucking fast forward shit you have to listen to the whole fucking song mm-hmm. the whole album the whole album you have sometimes like 15 16 songs that you have to hear the whole thing detail I mean even to like the crazy little guitar riff yeah and you could sample that and make it a hit. And it's Who's happened. the best at sampling, you think? Ooh. That's, that's a good question. <laughs> that is a good question. That's a matter of taste. Yeah. Like for me, it's always been Cypress Hill, dude. I just, Ooh, I've Muggs. always liked their shit. Mugs. Yeah. Yeah. Mugs. Actually, you know, it's funny that he, the first album, mm-hmm. all he had was 18 records. No oh, shit. That's all he had. Huh. And he made a fucking classic record. And he said now that he has so many thousands and thousands of fucking records. I can like, make. It's like my with, my first song with like, him is uh, "How to Kill a Man." Oh yeah, yeah. that's like dude for me. Yeah. That's fucking that's, it, dude. You remember we were right talking like over the phone about Mugs, Tricky, and Grease? Yes. That album, Jack Suppose. Mm-hmm. Great fucking album. Yeah. Great album. I don't know. Are you hip with Tricky? No. Tricky is like, I wouldn't call him a rap artist, but he's, he's trip hop. He's definitely in that trip hop community, yeah. and uh, yeah, um, he was in a he was in a 
he was involved with Portishead. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, I know a person. Please. He was involved with a, a group called Nearly God. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't know. I think England and in, in, in Europe over there, Great Britain, they have they have hip hop on. They have hip hop on a pedestal over there. Yeah, they're different. Over and, there. and and they do things differently. America fucking shit up. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I think over there, they're, it's not like they appreciate it more. They look at it different and they create. They, yeah, they, they come up with their own versions. Yeah, they, they actually take pride in it like we do, but in a different way, man. Yeah. You know, from Rick was saying that, I've heard him talk about that. He says that he's been to concerts out there, and they're so different than the ones in, in America. Mm-hmm. They appreciate their shit way more. Yeah. They, they I don't know, I, I want to go to Europe just for that reason. You know what, I think they hold, I think they hold more stock in the music. Hey, when you, go to, when you go to Europe, bro, and you go to Germany, bring back some Schneeberg. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's right. That's right. That's Landon, right. we gotta la- have Landon try it, man. Landon has to do Schneeberg. You can't leave without doing Schneeberg. Yeah. What is that? Oh, uh oh. Yeah, we'll, we'll tell you right. Rick, now. can you bring up the? Sh- <laughs> <laughs> Rick, can you bring up the Schneeberg, please? It's on the table downstairs. Yeah, we. Um, yes, sir. Everybody did it. Everybody does it. I, I, I did it. I didn't want to the first time, and then when I did it, okay. Brief description of Schneeberg. Schneeberg, um, it's a white powder. That you snort like cocaine, mm-hmm. okay? But it's not cocaine. <laughs> it's like it's, it's like a it, uh, some of it's, it's synthetic. Mint. It's like a powdered sugar with menthol. Uh huh. What is it used for normally? Okay, right so according to Rick, our producer over here, it's used to. Um, <laughs> oh really? <laughs> it makes you talk more too. <laughs> yeah, it, it makes you it, talk it, more. Yeah. AKA cocaine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a but synth- synthetic absolute- cocaine. Cocaine is a hell of a drug. <laughs> <laughs> and so is Schneeber. <laughs> but there's uh, absolutely Schne- no narcotic in it. Yeah, yeah Schneeber is it, not a drug. It's, 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 mm-hmm. it's just a... Uh, it's a powder that you uh, snort. It's like snuff, <laughs> right? Yeah, I, w- I wouldn't call it I wouldn't call it snuff, uh, but it's definitely... It is snuff. Is it snuff? It's snuff. Yeah, it's snuff. I looked it up when I found out what, when you guys brought it. I'm like, I look this shit up, and the yeah, first I, thing that said is snuff. Because Bago was Bago was afraid to try it the first the yeah, day he was I here. Did, yeah, I didn't do it. Didn't but do then it. So I t- told so many people about it, and they all asked me, "Did you do it?" I said, "Nah." They're like, "Well, I said, fuck it, let me try it now." Let me just look at this. Let me just look at it really quick. Oh, the googly eyes are not original. <laughs> let me see. see. Look, look, look. It's always fucking full, man. It <laughs> it's always he fu- has toneladas <laughs> in the garage of this. Yeah, shit. it smells like a. Uh, like toothpaste it's powdered yeah. sugar and the menthol that's it okay so when I was in Germany we were all drunk mm-hmm. oh he's actually doing it oh shit <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't fuck around what are you talking about though <laughs> <laughs> he put it like on that if you guys yeah, if you guys yeah, see this shit here let me, let me show hey the first thing. time I fucking seen this fool I thought he was doing coke and I came here like what the fuck are they doing man? white These, lies. yeah exactly <laughs> Like, dude, I, Base. I, I, I thought this was straight <laughs> turn <laughs> cokehead. I'm like, what the fuck? This was straight turn cokehead. What the Schnee- fuck happened? Bird. Next thing you know, they're like telling me it's Nero. Visions, oh, okay. dreams, and passion. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, this is so crazy. Something of a phenomenon, <laughs> baby. <laughs> Baby, <laughs> hey, I wait. love that. Hey, is it me or hit that baby hard as fuck? Hell yeah, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the engineer was like, "Yo, yo, chill, man." <laughs> it's like we got to put that part down. Okay, <laughs> he's like, "Yeah, that was great, but can we get another baby from you?" <laughs> baby, just punch it in, baby. <laughs> so, uh, you know let- that's a sample, right? No, from yeah, what? that's an original. I I forgot the actual original, but that's an actual sample. So for there we go again. Mm-hmm. The originality behind hip hop is, you know, there's a debate <laughs> about being original. You know what I'm saying? Like there's being original in hip hop and hip, but hip hop actually always sampling from somebody else, and that's what makes hip hop though. They're, but that's you know, what make it. I mean, hip hop itself is an original, original. Yeah, genre. yeah, it's an original genre. I mean, it, it started in New York. I mean. And it's it's it was evolved from straight cats that were um, hungry Not to the straight be out cats. there. You know, they were hungry to be out there in the fucking. You know, they wanted to be heard, man. <laughs> like they wanted like, to be heard out there, so they had lyrics. They got they had things to say, man. And there was rappers. There was battle. There was people battling. Joel, in the give me a beat. Give me a beat. <laughs> I don't mind chasing mice around. <laughs> okay, that's enough. Look into the alley, looking oh. for a fight. 
singing the blues while the lady cats cry. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get more hip hop than that, right? Good there, times, man. good times. Yeah. See, that's another element that hip hop actually invented is a, is a beatboxing. Man. Actually, no, it came from jazz, but you know, hip hop actually evolved more from it. That whole beatbox. I think, I think, uh, hip hop hit, made, made boys, its own. Yeah, Fat Boys. I mean, they had a whole song on beatboxing. Fucking uh, um, Dougie Fresh. Had it's a whole definitely song. a derivative of scat. Yeah. That's what I was saying. Like but whole, it's um, not. It's not. Yeah, I don't think they man. took it from. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. Uh, Louis Armstrong's. Yeah, he did a lot of scat. That's what pretty much what he did throughout the whole <laughs> whole career. Just like how um, the MPC and everything, it was out of necessity. Yeah, yeah. It was you, something they needed to do so they could spit bars over, so somebody would mimic a, a drum machine. Yeah, you know that's how that evolves. Yeah. No, yeah, I did. You know, like I did. I so, when we talked about beating on the on the fucking desk, that yeah. was our first drum machine right there yeah. with the pencil. Hell yeah, yeah, yeah I remember that. Yeah. Those those were fun days right there. So we got we we got dr- actual bona fide drummer in the house. Yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, uh <laughs> hip hop, uh, hip it, hip it. <laughs> yeah, it don't stop. You know, it's funny if you even thinking about like. How they used to rap back then in their delivery. Mm. Broken yeah, glass yeah, everywhere. Yeah, People yeah, pissing yeah. on the stage. You know they just don't care. care. Yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah. It evolved right. from what it is now, which yeah. is mumble rap. I think Rakim, Rakim is the reason why it evolved the way it did. Yeah, he had different yeah, cadences. Was, yeah, he the did. way he started, you know, started to switch the shit around. And hey, Ra- Rakim, hey. Rakim was uh, Rakim was the the wave that broke the rock. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they said it. They've actually been documented, and they say that that he's the one that changed a lot. And Big Daddy Kane was a, another one too that actually changed the way people heard. And because people before were doing that too, la, da, la, you know, then all of a sudden Big Daddy Kane, and before you started ripping it, yeah. And then and then, you know, and then you got fucking <laughs> fucking uh, what's his <laughs> name, <laughs> Shaggy, Mr. Boom Bastic, Boom Bastic, <laughs> fucking shaggy <laughs> I'm the real gangster I don't like that fucking <laughs> excuse me Mr. Uh, officer uh, still looking like that that fucking okay, guy okay. or fucking Shabba fucking Shabba oh, fucking Rank. Shabba <laughs> Mr. <Nobody>. Yeah. Shabba <laughs> <laughs> she caught me in the living room <laughs> Shabba <laughs> you know what I am a huge reggae fan mm. you know you know ska dub like I'm just big on that. I'm big on that. you know and skinhead reggae, all that fucking all that fucking Jamaican music. You miss me with Shaggy. I'm fucking sorry. <laughs> You'll fucking you fucking know miss what? me. Honestly, I, all of Shaggy's music, the only song that I remember liking when I was younger was Boombastic. Mm-hmm. Cuz that had a little Marvin Gaye sample. Yeah. You know, and it was, it was just, uh, Yeah, and it's just uh, <laughs> <laughs> it really is though. I didn't even say shit. That's fucked up. But I didn't say shit. I just thought it was great. It's, 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 it's the core, you know. Yeah. I just like coked out. Just like yeah. No, there's no narcotics here. It's just <laughs> snuff. What was a hey, uh, Landon? What was like one of your first experience in hip hop? Like what that made you just want to love it and just grow with it? You know what? I'm not even gonna lie to you. The the first hip hop. Okay, of course, you know, I remember, like, LL Cool J, Around the Way Girl, when I was younger. I, I like that song a lot, but hip-hop really took a hold of me, i say, 99, when I bought Juvenile's first CD. I know that's weird, but it may, you know, it's not even, like, that much hip-hop, hip-hop like that. It's not, like, your, your typical, you know, Manny Ladies Fresh. and gentlemen, you can't see me, but my eyes are rolling. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, I'm more, uh, for me, like, <laughs> so, okay, so, I'm 30. Mm-hmm. So, back in... Dirty thirty, dirty thirty. Back yeah, in, that, was, that was your era. Was yeah, it? so yeah. so hearing put some glasses on in your nerdy thirty. <laughs> <laughs> you know, hearing like juvenile and stuff like that, and Manny Fresh's beats. I think that's what mm, kind of yeah. captivated me more than anything. And yeah. um, Ti, were well, you a Ti fan too? It and hell yeah, 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 yeah. Ti like Cash Million. They're pretty <clears> much <throat> is the ones that around that era. Yeah, because yeah. you know you had your No Limit and yeah. you had your Cash Money. Mm. I, I, of course, I went the Cash Money route mm. because I think they're more raw and yeah. they had more talent over i love those photoshopped fucking album covers, covers fuck with all those fucking 
bling bling diamond and then in this, in this oh, corner God. and then you have a big ass tire on this corner and <laughs> it's like it's like they got their uncle george in this fucking windows 98 computer yeah. and they just photoshop man it's, those it's, album covers look like they were made in like five hey, minutes yo, yeah. <laughs> yo listen i seen a, a special probably back in maybe 2002 and it was about the guys who did the covers oh, wow. it was no shit they did all the no limit they did all of the um cash money if you notice they all all the covers look alike yeah and it was two white dudes, I think, and they then they had a, wow. they had a whole business uh, doing the whole um, album covers. We got to get a hold of them. Stereotyping <laughs> like one. a motherfucker. If anybody you know, knows them, please comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> please put a comment and say who you they know. like. Diamonds, let's put some diamonds in there. <laughs> you know, and then, you know the flames, uh, the oh, random shit. flames oh, in the background. I think yeah. I think I heard him mention bling. Put some bling in there. It, it, bring it, a diamond. It, 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 needs, that, it needs more bling. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't do any Outcast covers, did they? No, they didn't. That but they did Snoop Dogg's era. album when Snoop Dogg was on, uh, on no, no Limit. No, no, no Limit. Oh shit! And that's still really? the tackiest Snoop Dogg album. And this is coming from a person that saw the Doggy Style album oh, cover. Yeah, classic, yeah. man. That's the classic fucking No Limit man. album covers way more tackier than that. I was yeah. living in Compton when that shit came out, and that's all I heard in the streets, man. <clears throat> oh man, that's in all I heard is fucking Snoop Dogg. Yeah. Well, you know what? I lied to you guys. I lied. No um, way. <laughs> the first album, now that we've mentioned Dr. Dre and Snoop, mm-hmm. the fir- I was in seventh grade. The first album that I actually got, The Chronic 2001. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Okay. Nice. So that was the first album that I listened to through and through. And I, I remember the first time hearing the next episode, I think I <laughs> yeah. shit my drawers, man. Yeah. The Run DMC Christmas song. Was that your first? <laughs> yes. Really? really? Yes. My, my, okay, so my sister, shout out to Loopy, I love you. And my brother w- lived in the house, and my brother was more like an acid rock, punk rock, and I got that from them. They were he was listening, to, he was listening to Black Flag and the Tubes and Van Halen, and my sister was listening to Run DMC, LL Cool J, and W.A. Nice. But the first song that I heard all the way through on my own, stealing her shit, the um, Run DMC Christmas song. Wow. Uh, okay. For me, da, 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 I still da, da, remember da, da, the uh, <laughs> I don't know, four or five albums that my brother had in his little uh, tagging bag where he had all his markers and shit, <laughs> all his uh, spray can tips and shit, you know? Mm, that was that guy. <laughs> and um, <laughs> it's these albums that I would listen to over and over and over and over, and there were tapes. It was... Um, uh, paid in full, Eric oh, B and Rakim. Mm-hmm. Fucking bad album. Classic. It was gotta be tough. MC Shady, Dana oh, Dane, shit. Salt and Pepper. Wow. Okay. Push it. <sighs> yeah. Push it. It's with the push it. <laughs> push it. And uh, <laughs> uh, my mic sound nice. Check one. My mic sound Ooh, nice. Check two. My dude, mic sound nice. nice. Hell Check yeah. Three. Right that's about shit. now, in the place to be, dude. Wow. That that. Those are the albums that I would listen to over and over and over and over. And wow. that was my introduction to old school, early hip hop, you know? Okay. Nice. That's how. And then it just funneled down into, you know, yeah, we all grew up on punk and shit, but on the hip hop hip hop side of things, sorry, my voice is jacked up, man. On the hip hop side of things, um, and just for the sake of being like diverse and, and, and whatnot when it came to music, it just naturally funneled into. NWA, mm-hmm. you know, MC Breed, mm. EPMD, the Ghetto Boys, Too okay. Short. And yeah. there was there was there was great radio stations back then that was playing. Oh yeah, K D A K D A Y, bro. K D A Y the A M version. Oh, yeah. the <laughs> AM Wait, version. listen, speaking of radio, do y'all remember um Theo? Um, <laughs> we were just oh, talking yeah, about yeah. it. But do you remember his drops <laughs> where uh, DJ Quick did one, yeah. Ice Cube yeah. did yeah. another? Yeah. Y'all listen to classic. Ninety two point three the beat. Y'all listen to the Theo ninety two point three. <laughs> Hello, ladies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I still remember going to Mexico and bringing over a Fat Boy CD or I'm sorry tape, mm-hmm. the bootleg from Pacific, and thinking I was bringing these guys new shit, and they just started laughing, dude. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, "What the fuck is that?" You know, Spanish. <laughs> the <laughs> fat Chalino. boys are back. <laughs> <laughs> dig from the orderlies, dig. <laughs> Disorderlies, <laughs> Damn. Nah, my, my you guys stop tape. illing? You're going to hurt each other. <laughs> my, my first you be illing. <laughs> <laughs> my first legit seat cassette actually was uh, a fucking Naughty by Nature, dude. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. I had the, hey, the single. You done with OPP? Hey, yep. I you done with OPP? Yep. I Were you saw done with them. OPP? I saw them. I was done with taking a shit. <laughs> hey, I saw other people's potties. I saw... <laughs> 
I saw Naughty by Nature live last year at the uh, Queen Mary, you know, All Star oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. freestyle. They flew to the airport, dude. Yeah, they, 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 I'll tell you this right now, they fucking tore it up, man. Yeah, they, and they still are doing it. Up, it. They still look the same yeah. too, dude. Bel yeah. Biv DeVoe was there too. Oh yeah, oh, dude, you know what? Fucking kicked ass, man. Trench by Naughty by Nature is a fucking great actor. He's really, yeah. really good. Yeah. He came out. He Jason's came, lyric. Yeah. He, he came out in uh, Oz, the TV show, the HBO show about the prisons. Yeah, yeah. As as a prisoner that fucking killed a bunch of people. Yeah. And then bragged about it. Speaking of OPP, <laughs> you know, this is called poopery. You got what poopery? You, you <laughs> Before you go to the toilet, spray. <laughs> Hey, you can't. Uh, you that shit's pretty potent too. That's <laughs> it. Fuck, yeah, dude, that thing's fucking you're gonna knock me out already, dude. <laughs> you can't forget about Public Enemy, bro. Yeah, you know, yeah. can't trust Chuggy. it. Yeah, okay. and see, and then it goes back to what we were talking about earlier. You got the beats, but you got that um, East Coast, um, you know, style of composing lyrics. Yeah, Chuck D was fucking, uh, you know, masterful. Like For that. some, yeah. okay, now Public Enemy. And I'll, I'll probably get, I'll probably get shit from this from our listeners, but Public Enemy was the, was a group that that brought the middle Western kids, the white kids, into hip hop. That's the group that started it all. Because if you go to a Public Enemy show back then, there was nothing but fucking white kids, well, and well, they were fucking you, they were stage diving to, to fucking. But it, uh, Beastie Boys had a hand in that as well. Yeah, the Be- and, yeah and the, Beastie Boys, in, in yeah, NWA too. Yeah. Fucking Jesus Christ, Christ dude. dude! You drop everything, <laughs> dick. I thought I was bad, dick. I drop fucking everything, dick. That, that's an expensive <laughs> mic you're dropping there, dick. <laughs> mic <laughs> drop you don't want, dick. Uh, okay. Expensive phone, <laughs> expensive you should, you mic. You should have been a producer because you, you know you used to drop shit. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> <laughs> You know, he's known to make the dream. No, he's known to make the beat <laughs> drop. <laughs> <laughs> the mic drop. What up, Jay Dilla? Make that beat okay. right there, J E. Before you drop and you get pooped on, poopery is the way to go. Poopery. This podcast sponsor, is sponsored sponsor. by Poop- Poopery. poopery. <laughs> we are looking for sponsors now. Hey, poopery, yeah, if you're he, out there. Hit can. us up. If you got to take a shit, this is it. <laughs> <laughs> are you fucking serious? Yeah. Okay. I got that at an airport. Hey, as a and if, the wife. anybody, anybody that works at Poopery and who's executive, uh, email us at laclica dot gmail dot com. Wait a wait a wait a wait a wait a time out. So you spray? What the fuck is this? It's what, a spray. So it's just a spray that yeah. covers your shit smell, dude. <laughs> but and it does it pretty well. Yeah. yeah. You spray this in the toilet before I take, you shit or after? No, you no. Shit? You just spray it around you. Like at, where I work, when I take a shit in the toilet there, that way my fucking you know it's courtesy. It's a courtesy fucking spray, dude. Yeah. Just like if you, you mixed up the courtesy, f- if you mixed up the courtesy flush, if you would have <laughs> had a bottle of poopery, uh, you would have been. They would right. not smell that stuff, dude. Yeah. Poopery. I don't available shit. at your local airport. Man, we're taking a break. Okay, there we go. All right, so we were we had a, a talk about the blurred lines. You know, we're talking about sampling and stuff, and we started talking about the blurred line stuff with uh, Robin Thicke and you know Pharrell and Ti, and um, we kind of we talk, talking about it, thinking about it being somebody from hip hop and and understanding sampling and, and stuff like that. To me, that was not a lawsuit. That shouldn't have happened. You know, um, it's not a direct sample. It doesn't, it doesn't, to me, it doesn't sound exactly the same. There's still different elements that, you know, made it different. There's still elements that made it different. It is not like, I can see if they went in and they took the, and if they sampled his voice or something, or even redid his, like, even re recorded the same lyrics. That's another thing. But it's a whole other song. It was totally different for me. It wasn't a direct sample. I think what the misconception of that song was that he's singing in the same key as Marvin Gaye. And he hit he the always sings that. Yeah, you know? he, he say you see what with Robin Thicke, his his father used to take him to R and B shows. He was a big R and B fan, and Robin Thicke's father was Alan Thicke, and Alan Thicke had star power back then when when Robin Thicke was young, and he got him backstage and all these great great R and B concerts and stuff, and he became very influenced by the by the sound, and he made it his own. Al- Robin Thicke is a very accomplished classical guitar player. Really? That song, I'm Lost Without You, mm-hmm. the, the guitar parts. Mm-hmm. Robin Thicke's fucking playing the guitar on that. I, I like that song, actually. Yeah. He's, he's, a, he's very... <laughs> and for them to, to say that when Pharrell Williams in, in did that song, 
It's just that you know he he's a he's a very talented singer and he can hit those notes you know and I think that I could see them I could, I could see what their what the, what the what the argument was about I could see what the lawsuit was about but you know I don't see it but you got to look at the way that the actual other people seen it because the first time I heard that song I knew that's what it was yeah I th- I caught it right away I told my wife I'm like oh shit there's look, too many similarities and I'm right away I knew it was but then I seen the big time you know the behind the scenes and everything started happening it started actually flourishing talking about he sampled it or he used it but it made sense my first I, I knew I mean it's it's like 99 percent there they had an argument because like they they really didn't sample it. they interpolated it. but they're not really interpolation because interpolation is the actual direct sample and they play it over with their you know their own instrument it still wasn't interpolation it was just it was, it was like inspired by yeah, it was inspired and they you know admitted what, it. they got inspired when by that it. album dropped when the when the evolution of ramen thick dropped we bought that album and i played the fuck out yeah. of that album it was great when that song came out i thought it was a nod to marvin gay i mean i thought it was yeah, I mean, it was just like, hey, I think this is my. Homage. This is, I think they're playing homage. Yeah, to they're, him, pl- they're, they're, they're they're playing homage to it. Yeah, I, I think I think that um that it was just a, a nod to 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 Marvin Gaye, like a tribute, yeah. not not a, a, a blatant ripoff. Not because enough to they get had seven same... million dollars for it. That's pretty fucked up. <laughs> yeah. You know what though? The only good thing about that song, to, to be honest with you, was a fucking video, dude. Oh, the topless version. Yeah, dude. That, yeah. Those, are, those were great titties. Dude. Yeah, <laughs> those were fucking great titties. All man. the titties on there were great. Yeah, <laughs> like and, honestly. And he dude. just found her somewhere. That girl, he just found her. The, like the, wandering Emily around Emily Raddatch, whatever her last name is. But dude, I, looked, I, I looked her up. That's I, why I know her name. <laughs> I, I mean, not that anybody gives a shit, but Two shits. I thought that. Uh, performance that live performance on tv that he did i think as it was at the mtv awards or the american music or whatever the hell it was Was miley cyrus with him yeah okay. <laughs> when he came out looking like fucking beetlejuice and, <laughs> you know had that fucking chick singing with him that was like bad pr dude like it was it just didn't look good on it him. was a hot fucking mess i'm yeah. gonna it give a, a shout out mess, yeah. i'm gonna give a shout out to those titties dude oh, please shout out, <laughs> shout out, out to, to those titties. titties i think there were three sets of titties dude. and there's, there's, a, there's a black set of titties and two white set of titties and then they all look great they're all fucking <laughs> nice that's the way all titties should look yeah most definitely even on nasty bitches dude <laughs> speaking of speaking of titties we were talking at, at work about you know you know, hot '90s women, and they're like, "Hey, who's hot?" And they're like, "Yeah, the cast of Friends, the female cast of Friends." That and shit I, changed like a motherfucker. <laughs> well, hold on, hold on. I, I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting back, I'm getting back to the music. I'm getting back to the music. And and I no, said, no, 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 I'm talking about the way we can't look at women now. That yeah. Oh yeah. And I said, and they they said, you know, like all these women, they're naming all these women. And I go, every woman in a George Michael video. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. That freedom, the freedom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. That, what is that? Um, Cindy Crawford, uh, Naomi Campbell, and a couple other bitches. That's all. I yeah, they, for, for me, it was every woman on Three's Company. <laughs> Suzanne Summers. Yeah, Suzanne oh, Summers. Dude, those are just... <laughs> Fucking Chrissy, Janet. Yes, cousin, even, cousin Cindy. Even Mr. Yeah. Furley's wife was fine. Hey man, <laughs> hey wait, the, the bitches on Merrill's Roper. place. Merrill's oh, place. Man, the bitches on Merrill's place are pretty hot. Oh, There's yeah. a couple of hot on Merrill's Hell place. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, I wanted to swim in that bitch. <laughs> uh, who else? Um, yeah, I think, man, and you look at the the difference between music videos back in the '90s versus now. Oh yeah, dude. even the hip hop music yeah. video. Look at Rump Shaker. Mm-hmm. Every female was skinny. You know, barely had ass. Had that weird ass bathing suit that came up high <laughs> with the the strapless ones yeah. and floral yeah, some, print, some weird yeah. fluorescent color. Yeah, yeah, like lime green, look like highlighter. <laughs> you know, it made that popular, right? And, and well, now you get positive. Right. Now you get positive. <laughs> now you get positive music video and see butthole. Literally yeah. butthole and coochie lips. Yeah. But see, back then the the videos actually went with the song. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, like you heard the song and they actually seen the video and you seen the visual of it. I actually miss. Tawny Katane in videos. Tawny Katane, she was in that White Snake video, wasn't she? Yeah. She was yeah. all over those two Jaguars. Yeah. Here, Here I, go I go again, again on my own. own. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that shit. That's a lot of them, man. Going down that lonely road, I never know. That's David Cover. I was a big, big video person like Chris. I used to actually sit down and watch your MTV raps. 
and Rap City and record uh, all of my videos, and I still have those tapes. Nobody recorded over them. Um, the Jose Sin Censura, is that it? the Jose Sin Censura, yeah, yeah. the yeah. Mexican Jerry Sin Springer. Sura. I love that shit. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know what the fuck they were saying, but I love hey, it. Fabian remember Fabian? Fabian came, came, came out of that. Fabian no came way. Out of that <laughs> Hey, you didn't, lie. hey, no, and didn't fucking wow. Jose came on in that shit yeah, too. Yeah, but that was a real one. The homie came Hosey's out. Hosey's was real. Oh, he came on in Christina, right? Yeah, oh, wait, wait, Hosey's but was God. real. Hey, Buscando Amor? Yeah. Oh shit! <laughs> that shit was. Sh- I used to like that shit too. Wow. I, I could have sworn. When I had to watch that, I could see a nipple slip every now and then. Oh, yeah, yeah. dude. Oh, yeah. Like, they be in the yep. jacuzzi with see-through shirts on. I'm yeah. like, what the fuck is it? I'm watching this. See, before even <laughs> before like, even that, we had a. Uh, a la cama con porcel. Yeah. Oh, cama con that was this is seventies, dude. Hey, this, is, <laughs> this is pre Benny Hill. Re- oh, re- remember, remember uh, when that guy uh, went on the freeway and he, he had this big old banner that said something about HMOs and then he shot himself. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Uh, yeah, ninety three. And I remember they played it once on like a, American news. Yeah, censored it. And then on channel thirty four <laughs> and fifty two, that was like they the showed, highlight reel. They kept showing it <laughs> over, over and over. over the again. actual him blowing his brains yeah. out because yeah. you know American news they they yeah. cut yeah. the camera. They didn't give a oh, fuck no. in Mexico, man. Because uh, like like, like, video. like live TV, <laughs> live TV isn't live. They have a they have a, a five second delay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, because of that. Mm-hmm. Because of that. Because of that motherfucker. Oh, that right was there. started. So yeah. yeah. Okay. And so, but no fucking Mexican news. That's like what. They really fucking believe in that. And what bleeds, hey, what bleeds, leads. Well, yeah. Mexicans, yeah. we're like, why are you zooming now? Zoom in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I want to know why I'm delayed on this freeway. I want to see that shit. <laughs> well, that's what that's going back to our face of the death days. Thing. Yeah, oh, I used to love face of the death. Yes. Hey, you remember? I used to you, get those videos when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You remember yeah. banned from up, TV? Yeah, banned yeah. from TV. Yep. Yeah. Like, am I fucked up for watching this? Being ten years old watching this, and like, <laughs> I, I remember seeing <laughs> that. Who did that to you? Man? Yeah. I made you like that. I think it was on Faces of Death like two uh <laughs> where they showed you homeboy on the electric chair and shit oh, yeah. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's oh, fucking the, the gnarly cracking the fucking uh the monkey's brains oh, yeah. eating it no, uh, the, hey, shit, the, the drawn and quartered yeah oh the fucking oh. horse dude, damn, oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. that was fucking no, we used to watch we used to watch this what that's just normal now. Yeah, it, it's, yeah. it's so crazy it's, it's just normal, normal. it's normal like, now man, that's just a facebook post now yeah <laughs> well, Face of Death is PG thirteen now. Yeah, right? you know, and you cut back to like ass, right? So I remember being a, being younger, not even a kid, really, just being a teenager. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember being online or whatever, and social media. You'll see every now and again, you'll see a chick. Uh, you okay? Now it's the norm to see a chick twerking or yeah. shaking her ass somewhere, mm-hmm. like with no is, ass, <laughs> with no ass, a lot of ass, no draws, whatever. I don't know how it became like now I can scroll through my Instagram and seeing some chick half naked and I just keep scrolling. Mm-hmm. But if you rewind ten years ago, even ten years ago, you stop like, oh shit, yeah, that chick half naked. <laughs> yeah, on exactly. Here. <laughs> yep. Okay, so I think I think uh, baby got back was the breakthrough <laughs> video. <laughs> <I> know, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that fucked everything. Me and up. me and Joel here, we just spent fucking hours and hours on a website called steakandcheese.com. <laughs> oh, yeah. mm-hmm. And fucking this what was the like fuck? the goriest fucking shit. Right, and we had this. There was this video. It was like Asian video, and it was called "I Bet You Can't See This All the Way Through." You remember that video? Oh my god! Oh, please tell me about it. <laughs> okay, it was called "I Bet You Can't See This All the Way." Through. You remember that video? You saw it too. I, I, I showed it. Wa- to you. No, I couldn't watch it. That's and okay, disgusting. it was it was a. Uh, I, I guess it was like a clip of a fucking porno, and it was these. It was this couple, and they started out by like I don't know were they kissing or something I don't know what the I, I don't remember dude I, 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 <laughs> I, 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 I it was this. super I don't remember that it was super fucked up and um the guy was on top of the girl and the guy the girl was sticking his finger in his mouth mm. and they started throwing up on each other it was we were fucking screaming like oh no mm. and the fucking girl had a snot bubble a big snot bubble on her face and the guy got up there like, like he lunged forward and sucked the snot bubble out of the nose, oh and then we fucking turned it off. We you couldn't even, finish it. Did you we couldn't see one? it all the way through it. And then I tried showing it to fucking Bago over here, like like two days later. I was like, nah. And <laughs> we couldn't finish it. I couldn't remember the one you wanted to. Well, I, was it you that showed me the guy shitting the girl eating the guy shit? No, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. That was the one that I'm like, Shaggy. no way. It wasn't me. All right, <laughs> so that was nasty, man. That was some shit that I it's literally. So shit I uh, see. yeah, get, getting back to fucking music here. Yes. I'm Fuck. sorry, man. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry <laughs> for, for the okay. shit talk. God go damn. Back to shit. That's um, some shit right there. <laughs> 
You know, let's, 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 this is the, this is the signature thing of this podcast is we shit. go off the fucking rails. Yeah. So go yeah. out there and find yourself some poopery. Yeah. <laughs> That's what started it. Yeah. Yeah. It was the poopery. Yeah. Blame the poopery. That right there. But you don't smell the toilet now. You don't. No. And I, I'm pretty sure you need some really maximum industrial strength. Oh, okay. But it still smells like shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but remember the dog was farting last week. Oh my! I sure God. brought this out, dude, so yes. you can test it out. So we were having a meeting about you know like social media and all that other stuff that you know going forward and how we're going to take this. And the fucking dog wouldn't stop farting. <laughs> Buck? No, no, the Maggie. Maggie. No, it's the young pup. Baby farts, oh, man. I swallowed that fart. <laughs> my mouth was open. <laughs> I was not, I mean, no, she was right here. Uh-huh. And she farted, and I just. Like if you stuck your head up a cow's ass, <laughs> it would smell better than those farts. Mm-hmm. It was like fucking uh, dog helium, dude. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was nasty. Man. Oh man. So back to music. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're not gonna get back to it. Now. We're not gonna get. We're not gonna get back to okay, it. We're so, done. Okay, we're let's done talk about. No, I got one point. I brought it up earlier, like for a split second, and then just got shitted on. But remember the baby ba- got back video, turned a lot of things around. Yeah. There was a big controversy, mm-hmm. and nowadays that's normal. See, back then videos were able they 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 told the story of the song, right? You used right, to right. be able to visualize it when you heard it, and then when you heard this, when you, you see the, the video, video, it, it was it, like oh it matched, shit, it matched. And I missed that. Mm. Yeah, I missed that in videos, and I used to be a big video fucking. You know, I used to love watching videos. Yeah, that was my you, thing. You had like hype Williams who would put together some dope visuals that actually matched the tone of the song. Yes. That don't happen no more. No. It's just that it's just nah. This is it's a few dudes out here who who's directing these videos, but it's the same shit. Just a lot of random shit that just you know. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just like snorting shit where you're like, yeah, you know, they're just making the video and all yours. <laughs> <laughs> White <laughs> lie, baby, baby. <laughs> But yeah, man, like I miss. So that. don't do it. I miss that. <laughs> <laughs> as he's as he's, as he's pouring the white powder on. This. <laughs> so yeah, I missed that. I really missed that in videos, man. I wish I could see that again, but it's I. There's not even MTV anymore, man. Nah, nothing. MTV is not MTV anymore. Yeah, they don't play music videos. Which it is weird. sucks. It I'm sucks. like I'm like Robert De Niro's wife in Casino. Like, you shouldn't be doing this. You shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> he's snorting coke in front of his daughter. <laughs> So yeah, man, that's that's what I wanted to say, man. That I really missed that part of uh, hip hop and the part of the videos. Cause like I said, I was a huge video person. I love watching videos. And yeah. I can't watch them anymore. I think around the two thousand three or four era, that was it. Yeah, cause it, it didn't match anymore. Mm-hmm. Like even you think about love songs or R and B songs, it'd be the dude in the rain singing with his shirt half off, yeah. <laughs> tearing his shirt. <laughs> You know, yeah, saying like, about some love, and now everybody just want to fucking my stick fav- my thumb up your ass and yeah. shit like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my favorite R and B video of all fucking time is Orange Juice Jones in the uh, rain. <laughs> I saw you walking in the rain. Yes, I sampled that, and it matched. Yes, every video little matched. piece of it. Hey, I love his rant at the end. <laughs> Addy cat coat wearing. <laughs> He went off, and the, yes. the nigga was mad. He told her off. Man. He told her off, like straight. Leave, don't don't I miss you so much. I followed you, you today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Being me is like cornflakes without the milk. <laughs> <laughs> and I love how they showed her all disheveled at the end of the video. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> She's wearing like some fucking torn up sweater with holes in it. Yep. Yeah, and that was a that was what videos were meant to be. Yeah, they were a message to a visual to everybody. And, Cause remember, everybody knows how the whole MTV story is. You know, like they were to promote music. You know, everybody. They were to promote music. the albums. Exactly. They used to make the music, and then they thought about the video to make go with it, so they could sell more albums because it was a visual thing. I mean, Thriller. I mean, when Michael Jackson came out, Thriller. That video fucking blew his ass up. Even you, more, you know what? Man. I remember. I remember. Okay, wait. What year were you born? Seventy six. Oh yeah. So you remember eighty three. So I rem- I remember that I remember them hyping it up on Channel yeah, Four. It was huge, and they were fucking. They were just like, I mean, for weeks they yeah. were talking about the new Thriller video, mm-hmm. and it was like a fucking thirty. No, it was a forty-five minute montage yeah. before the video. Yeah, started. It was yeah like a, a behind the scenes. It was a movie. Yeah, it was, and it was a movie. Was a and movie. then they showed the video, and the video was like twenty-seven minutes. Yeah, 
Because it had like fucking Michael Jackson yeah. on a date, you know, and all this sort of mm-hmm. shit. It was a little mini movie. You know, and it was and actually he was in the, the movie. Girl. He wasn't actually in the theater yeah. watching the, the actual video. Yeah, yeah. And that came out. And that was genius. You know, that was the, re- the reason I used to like videos. Yeah. Even Smooth Criminal. Exactly. You fast forward it yes. to Smooth Criminal. Yes. It, it had the theme. Yep. He had the whole Moonwalker. Mm-hmm. Um, I had that VHS, matter of fact. Me and my yeah. sister watched it every day. Mm-hmm. But it was a, the whole story of you know, how things were put together. He ended up in his nightclub mm-hmm. where he wasn't supposed to be. And, and it had the 30s theme. It, had, it, just, it, had a very, it was very Casablanca. Yeah. yeah. And it just went. Everything just went yeah, together. Yeah, went. Now, what is it now? <laughs> it's, it's no, it's no more co- anymore, it's man. The cohesiveness. Of there's, no, there's no budget for videos anymore. You know what? So these I blame with a video camera. It's Robin Thicke's titties. There it is. <laughs> I like <laughs> that, though. <laughs> You know where we need I, more titty videos. Yeah. I get, I get, I get pinpoint the exact moment when that all changed, and that was uh, Puff Daddy mm. and and Biggie Smalls. Mm. And, and, and okay, I liked all that fucking music, but it was like an advertisement for Versace, like a commercial. I mean, yeah. Yeah, they were just like always name dropping shit, yeah. and I'm like, dude, come on, you know. Yeah, he was all, you know, he, he was like in the yacht. N- yeah. yeah. And then the the, the, the it became glam. With Bentley, Crystal, and, mm-hmm. and the fucking Gucci shoes, and you know, yeah. I hate See, to say, but you're actually kind of right. Yeah, I know I'm right. If I was I'm a rapper, Chris, <laughs> of course I'm right. If I was a rapper, my fucking video would straight up, straight out be a porn all dude. Yeah, <laughs> like, like literally. Well, couch. It is. Yeah. Like casting these, couch. These okay. <laughs> I like casting couch too. <laughs> matter of fact, and glory hole. Shouts out to glory hole <laughs> and casting couches. I, I love. Okay, glory. so there's a fucking there's a movie out there. It's called Sucking and Jiving. <laughs> oh. Okay. And it was a running joke between me and my girl, and I fucking I didn't watch it, but it mm-hmm. is a music video. Yeah. And in, in the music video, they're rapping, and they're fucking girls. That's tight. Yeah. <laughs> so they owe me royalties now. Come yeah. On. That was your idea. So yeah. from back when I was ten years old, Dick. Back when you back when you hit puberty. <laughs> Being here. In the rain. It's a fucking. <laughs> I saw you fucking him. <laughs> In the motherfucking rain. <laughs> you know what's crazy is that the last song, the album I made, the last album I made with my group, I sampled that song, The Rain. And I rap, I remember the, the reason I sampled it because I actually heard it when I was in seventh grade, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm, this is going to sound crazy, man, but it's a whole hip hop shit, right? Mm-hmm. When I heard it the first time, I said, <laughs> I really like that. I want to do something with that shit one day. And that's the song I sampled three years ago on for the album. State mm-hmm. of the Union. Yes. Yeah. And it's it was called the the, the rain, and it actually started. It, we we changed it to never be the same. But mm. ever since I heard it, I seriously said I'm gonna do sh- something with that rain with that song, and it fucking blew up. I sampled it. I actually played it over. I actually got on the keyboard and I played everything over. Mm-hmm. Every every little instrument. I programmed the whole thing. Let it out, dude. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to hide it. He's like, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I sampled the whole thing. I played it over, and then I got my brother-in-law to go into the studio and play the whole bass line over. Oh, wow. Okay. And, man, that, that song, a lot of, it got a lot of um, a lot of hits. Mm-hmm. I really, I'm, Chris heard it. Yeah. They really liked it. So that, that song, man, that you got to talk about, it's fucking crazy. It's, that came up. But the reason I like that song is because it was a Def Jam hit. Mm-hmm. It was actually the a rap label Russell Simmons picked him up, mm. and it was the first um, R and B singer that he brought up, and that song actually made it big. It did, yeah. I have mad respect for Russell Simmons. He was a very forward thinker when it Man. came to music, visionary. Like for he real. he named Run DMC. Yes, mm-hmm. Run. Yeah, he named Run DMC, yes. and he, he. I mean, he was just a forward thinker when it came to to the to the genre, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and he saw like where, where like other producers and other other record labels saw the future being the new album. He saw their third album and how it was going to sound and where they were going to take yeah, it. He brought it to and the team. energy. He was just like four moves ahead of everybody else, mm-hmm. and he was just. Like a, a little bit above his time, it's like the Quincy Jones of his genre. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Time, absolutely. Yeah. It, and it's funny because every now and every few, you know, every decade or so, there's always that one person, yeah. whether it be like Barry Gordy, mm. you know, and you know, in, in fact, you know, the Quincy Joneses, and you know, these these people who who musically, you know, forward thinkers, they think 
beyond they think bigger and you know because right now i think everybody's just stuck in the zone yeah i feel like we're in the dark ages right now yeah we need to break out of this shit you know what we need a rem- hip hop renaissance man. Yeah. even 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 you know crazy fucks like uh phil Spector. Mm-hmm. i mean no phil that, Spector, who's a genius yeah he's a fucking genius you, you know, know people with the, i think people with that much of a mind on one thing they can't function normally you know i think that's what it is i mean they're so like left they can't be right Mm -hmm. you know they're they're just their mind is just stuck on this thing their art their passion their their, their, whatever it is and that's what makes phil Spector a genius i I consider dr dre yeah the modern quincy jones if i had to say my favorite producer you know this may be super cliche but it's rick (laughs) curio you can't can't forget about rick rubin either Yeah, yeah rick rubin I would say it's it's a it's a mix between uh, Teddy Riley and uh, the Neptunes. Like for me, the Neptunes oh, yeah, was yeah. everything. Yeah, growing up, like listening to their music and how they put together the sounds of chord progressions and mixing and mashing different genres together. You know, a lot of this shit. You know, even their spacey sounding shit was mm-hmm. just dope to me. It was just different, yeah. and I love people who go different. Like Teddy Riley created his own. Mm-hmm. Sound the yeah. New Jack Swing sound oh, that yeah. was all Teddy Riley. Even, even 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 uh yeah. even the Neptune's group, the Nerd. Nerd was is, man. In search of that man, that, that album, album, probably one of my favorite albums. Yeah, that Easy. nothing fucking sounded like that, and it was like half half fucking you know whatever the fuck it was. Like kind of like electronica meets hip hop meets <laughs> yes. um, Rock. alternative. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was a turn where and everything started changing in hip hop. Yeah, yeah. That's when the super producers started coming out. You know, yeah. you had Swiss Beats. <laughs> Yeah. At the same time, when they started coming out, yeah, they changed a lot in Timberland. You know, it's funny that they all they all used the same thing, which was the ASR ten, mm-hmm. which I mentioned earlier. Mm-hmm. That machine right there made you it it made you make different. I mean, th- your music sounded different. Mm-hmm. It's like I don't know, and and then guitars. I don't know if there's a guitar out there. No, is there something that there's when, nothing that sounds like it. Is there something in, 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 um, that makes you think, okay, he used that, and that's the reason it was the hit? Yeah, like, uh, like we could say, like, like bands like, uh, well, guitar players like um, The Edge from U2, mm-hmm. he definitely has a signature sound. He uses a delay effect mm-hmm. on, okay. on his Stratocaster oh, okay. coming out of a, 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 the amp that he uses, and that gives him a signature sound. So you could listen to any song, even if you haven't heard it before, you can know automatically... It's mm. a U two song. Mm, okay, and the, the same way in hip hop. It's it. Every every hip hop producer has a sound. Yeah. DJ Premier has a sound. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Pharrell hear, Williams has Pharrell a sound. Pharrell has a sound. Yeah. Timberland has, has a sound. sound. It, every every has everybody has to have a signature sound. I honestly think Timberland and, and now don't kick my ass, but I think Timberland never worked with anybody. I don't think. Yeah, he was his own thing. He yeah, he, not, you know what he? No, no. What I, what I mean by that is that Missy Elliott. Leah was fucking was gone too soon, mm-hmm. but he didn't work with nobody. You know what I'm saying? Probably uh, Justin Timberlake is probably the only person that he worked with that would, came out to be like superstar status. Yeah. But everybody else was just like kind of like underground, but not not well, if, like if, almost almost big. Well, you know, all, he had a lot. He had a lot of features though. You know, yeah. like okay, he produced a lot of shit on like Jay Z's albums and mm-hmm. Busta Rhymes albums. Yeah. So it's just like that that producer that you know. As far as like his own shit, as far as what was it? Uh, not beat club. It was something else that Timberland was over. But um, yeah, his own in house stuff. Yeah, yeah. He did, Aaliyah did pass way too soon. And then you know Missy had to her hits or whatever. Yeah. And then you had like Nicole, a girl named Nicole Ray that he worked mm. with. And it was it's, it's, it's a handful of people that he worked with as far as like being Bubba Sparks, like oh yeah, being his people. But you know he was fe- he was featured on a lot of shit though. Like he was the go to producer. He was the go to guy. Yeah. <laughs> you know who don't get enough credit? <coughs> DJ Quick. Ooh. Quick don't get okay. enough credit. Yeah. Yeah. Quick is, is true. And G- he's a genius, man. Man, DJ Quick is so fucking hard, he, man. I have all his hashtag shit. DJ Quick. He's, man. he's got he's got some shit, man. DJ man, he's Quick. got some fucking licks, dude. And, and he's he he's really smart when it comes oh, yeah. to producing too. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like he he well, has yeah. all kind of jazzy shit to it. Like his inter like not interludes. His um okay, so he has something called um every album he has is like a melody. I think they call it like um but every album he has something. He had one for rock. I like a bridge. No, no, it was actually a separate track on each album. Oh, a little like, interlude. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. yeah it was yeah, an interlude. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. did it on the first album. Yeah, and then he, he had a little, little, little interlude between each song. Yeah, and he'll name them, and mm-hmm. then he'll have like one, two, three, and he had one for Roger Troutman yep. when he passed. When he did this shit live, 
um, at the uh, Source Awards <laughs> when MC8 was standing like sitting in the audience, <laughs> dissing him, and he's actually rapping this shit to him on stage. Yeah, that was some some baller ass shit right there. And the thing with DJ Quick is that he was actually a DJ. Yeah. So the thing, a lot of producers, but he wasn't done. that quick. I mean, I I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> he actually took his time to craft well, his beat. A lot of a lot of hip hop. <laughs> A lot of hip hop producers, the main ones, like they know they were DJs. Mm -hmm. They know what people like, and a lot of hip hop. Doctor Dre was a DJ. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Case in point. <laughs> Case in point. Um, Doctor Dre. <laughs> and, and see, and one thing that a lot of people don't know, and maybe they do, but if you notice, Doctor Dre, every guy he came out with, the first hit song always had their name on it. Mm -hmm. That was his thing because he said, "I'm gonna introduce an artist." My name is Doc no, and even um, when um, Snoop Dogg came out. Yeah. Snoop Dogg. Dog. So he knows what to do, and that's like the whole the introduction. Did. Exactly. Every guy he breaks out, his first song has to do with that rapper. And and, and, and he see, that's the genius behind yeah. him, and he's a DJ. He knows what people are going to hear. It's like every DJ in hip-hop back then, you know, the first, the, the first thing in hip-hop was the DJ. Before yeah. rappers, there was the DJ. Then the ad came the MC to hype the crowd. The DJ mm -hmm. knew what yep. he was playing. He played yeah. the songs for the crowd to hear, right? He knew exactly how to control everybody. So as a, as a Dr. Dre, as a DJ, he actually said, I'm going to bring out my people because I know exactly what people are going to hear. And I know what they're going to like. So, see, that's the genius behind Dr. Dre. A lot of people don't know, man. Yeah. He knows exactly how to market people. Not only that, he has... One of the greatest eyes for untapped talent. Yes, and Eminem and Fine was probably and the Eminem Fine was probably one of the best yeah. find somebody could ever yeah. find. Well, no, Eminem you was know what the shit before he found. I remember him. Eminem was, a, he was okay. Eminem he was a genius. That fool fucked everybody up. Now I don't think anybody does it better than Eminem. I know I'm gonna get a lot of shit for saying that, but mm -hmm. nobody does it better than Eminem. I agree. Um, I agree man. His freestyles, um, his his choice of you know music, and all that shit is comedy. Nobody does better than Eminem. Yeah, <clears throat> you know. But Dr. Dre's best find was Snoop Dogg. <coughs> okay, it, it, the most impactful. Too. Yeah, <laughs> but 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 on the, on the deal with that the deep cover song. Hey, you know, <laughs> let me tell you something. To me, nothing is more epic than that um, Marshall Mathers LP. Like the, yeah. the second one. Like there's there's not many hip hop albums I can listen to front to back that's one of them mm -hmm. like I can listen to every fucking track from the Kill You track to the Kim track it had comedy mixed with man everything it lethargic through, shit yeah, it was yeah. a journey man it took yeah. you through a whole him <laughs> yeah it was him the yeah. Slim Shady album was great though it was I uh, it like three times because the albums got stolen <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it was it was some good shit but Joel likes Parappa the Rapper dick <laughs> <laughs> you see with me is rapping to me is it's it's awesome. It's too many things. I mean, for me, it's metaphors. I'm a metaphor person. Mm -hmm. I love fucking metaphors. That's the genius, and that's the MC style in the the, the backpackers. And I love metaphors. Yeah, to fucking make it's something. It makes it poetic. Visual to make words, yeah. to make them visual, and actually make you rewind that shit a couple of times to find out what the fuck did he say. And and storytelling. That's storytelling. And aspect. then when he t and he and he's even a genius when he actually tells a story. The best story is Stan. Like, yes. the Stan song was yes. a damn good story. And I respect what you're saying. I mean, I understand, you know, I get it. A lot of people, some people, I know people, tea. I know people don't like, so I know some people that don't like him. And I, 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 I to each his own. Me, personally, he is one on the top MCs to me. Mm -hmm. MC meaning, lyrically, he could put words together that nobody did. Man. I think like, the only person that... And a lot of has to do with drugs. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Probably high as hell when he was doing it, but he... And, and, and that album right there, at that moment... He saved. He. I think that was the last. Actually, no. No, I'm sorry. Because then you got Chino XL. Mm -hmm. You had cannabis. Mm -hmm. You had a lot of people out there that are doing some amazing shit. But Eminem, man, is something else. Like I can't even. I. I can never go into that type of mentality. Yeah. He, he fucked me up when yeah. I first heard him. I was going through a lot of shit in that my life. Fucking, at that fucking. You remember I was talking about that Jay Z song that he did with, yes. the, with the Renegade. Renegade. He killed yeah. it. He, he fucking, killed it. He <laughs> murdered fucking Jay Z hey, on that track. Exhibit that uh, don't approach me song by Exhibit on the yes. Exhibit's Restless album. Yes. He ripped that too. Like um, he. Yeah. He's, he's you don't put Eminem on your album because no. he's gonna fuck you up. Yes. Just give him the fucking song. He's on yeah. his own. <laughs> he's in his own shit, man. Because uh, wait, wait, wait. Recently, there was a Nicki Minaj song. Mm -hmm. Uh, Roman's Revenge. Okay. And Eminem ripped that. Yeah. And he made Nicki Minaj have to do another verse. Yeah. Because he's like... He said... Uh, yeah. And he did another verse after that. Yes. yes. You know? There's a 60 Minutes um, segue, um, segment on Eminem. 
and he talks about you know his drug abuse and his his recovery of all that. You need and to go back to drugs again. <laughs> but he's putting out some good shit. Yeah, yeah. he needs to get hooked. And he's on coming out with a new album. Actually, yeah. you guys heard that whole new album. Yeah. Okay, but, uh, so it may not be as good. I feel like the drugged yeah. up Eminem is probably the better. Yeah. I keep dropping that shit. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so oh shit, shut up. <laughs> Damn, dude. <laughs> My bad, dude. I'm sorry. I'm a little drunk. Fuck you. Okay, he was talking about. How he has all his rhymes in a book and box like a fucking hoarder, yeah. and he writes really tiny, mm-hmm. so he can have save space on paper. And I'm pretty sure that's an old habit back when he was fucking nobody, yeah. trying to be an inspired rapper. And he was like saying, "There's nothing." That, he gets mad at people saying that there's nothing that rhymes with orange. Oh yeah, I remember that here. That's it. <laughs> and then he goes on rhyming orange like crazy. He's like, he's like, it's not how you say orange; it's how you enunciate it. And he said something to the effect of, and I'm, I'm fucking paraphrasing here. He's like, you know, I went out into my orange, four inch door hinge, and he starts rhyming orange. And I'm like, wow, that is fucking, that's crazy. I mean, even. That's even the genius behind that. For Rakim and Karis Wan to say he's a shit, that's. Means that a lot. Catapults you right there to yeah. the top, man. Because those are fucking heavyweights, yes. dude. I mean, I can't compare it to other genres who would actually say something like that. Well. T- tapping on like metaphors and stuff like that. There's a, there's a newer guy. I was watching this freestyle today. It was on Funk Flex, whatever. And his name is, uh, I think it's Loaded Lux. And Loaded Lux did like a seven minute freestyle. And I, I was just blown away. Wow. Like, if whenever anybody get a chance, <clears throat> I think it's recent, probably happened like maybe three weeks ago. Look that shit up on YouTube. Dude, name is Loaded Lux. And he went the fuck in. He had like, he, had, he was kind of charismatic with it too. And, Man, Jarvs, have you heard Jarvs? That motherfucker is mm, crazy no, too, I, man. If you guys get a chance, I posted it on Facebook, man. And my okay. shit, that motherfucker is like, he's the shit. And there's a guy named um, Fred the Godson or something like that. There's a lot of things I haven't seen lately. Yeah, but uh, most yeah. of these cats are from New York, though. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's a lot of things out there that a lot of people like me. No, I have been to where I went to a whole different realm with rap. Like I started, I stopped listening to rap for a long time, mm-hmm. and I started listening to more funk. So therefore, I went back. I to the love roots. funk, man. Like I went back to the roots of hip hop, like the actual samples, mm-hmm. and I went back to that era where I started digging more into the jazz shit. Yeah, um, me when, whenever hip hop, you know, if, if I get not tired, but if I need to resort to something else, funk is the first thing I go to. Yes. So I put put out some Ohio players, mm-hmm. or I'll do some, you know, something real funky. Yeah. You know, what I mean, some confunction. Mm-hmm. You know, and do you remember that Sinbad summer jam of the seventies? Man, <laughs> he, he would have different ones, but it was all in the nineties. You, yes. he had all these people, Gat Band performing yes. live, and in Jamaica, do you remember? It was in, in Jamaica, Jamaica and yeah, Aruba. I remember, Aruba. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, That's, that, I love watching those. And I went to that round. And there's a lot of them. There's yeah. a lot of cuties in the audience too. <laughs> like a lot of my, a lot of music collection is actually more of funk and jazz than yeah. rap. I, I, like in the nineties, I had a lot of CDs. Mm-hmm. I bought a lot. I, I had my album records, but a lot, a lot of CDs because. I started driving at that moment. Mm-hmm. So I started going out to the streets and I, I couldn't bring my records. So I bought CDs. Mm-hmm. So I started bringing my shit. So I started buying more and more CDs. But after that, I started buying more records. And more of the records I bought was a lot of funk mm-hmm. and jazz shit. And yeah, then I started know. listening to all that shit. And then I really gravitated towards that even more than hip hop. But it was cool because it took me to a different era. Yeah, and the thing is, like, and, and it all ties together though. Still, yes, yes. you know, it's the blueprint. It's, it's the blueprint, yeah. you know, because I listen to Earth, Wind, and Fire like it ain't no tomorrow. Mm-hmm. But you know, listen to that. You know, it's just early '90s hip hop, especially West Coast. We mm-hmm. we we funky with oh, yeah. it. You oh know? yeah, that's where it came from. Yeah, you know? we murdered that. We man, we we found that and we like we held on to it and we man, we changed the game with our sampling techniques. Yeah, and it's actually the <clears> New York. Mm-hmm. It got inspired through all that because around the late '90s mm-hmm. is when they started gravitating towards that funk because of, of Dr. Dre and G Funk and all that. Yeah, the, like, the G Funk started influencing a lot of a lot of the West, the East Coast. That's a, this one, like when um, they sampled Juicy Fruit. Yes, you know, <laughs> they, they did all that, and that was definitely inspired by the West Coast. Yes, mm-hmm. and the, and then it's not only that, but also the actual drum beat. It went from to doom 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 to 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 it started doing that a lot yeah and, beca- and then Biggie mm-hmm. a lot of his music started sounding like that De La Soul started sounding like that Tribe Called Quest started sounding like that 
and a lot of it came from being influenced and they admitted it too they got they say <clears throat> you know we got a lot of influence from dr dre shit you know because yeah. when the chronic dropped everybody started sounding like that shit after a while yeah and it's funny uh, you know the only people who actually kept their own thing was the, the south yeah. They, at, the South always kept their own vibe. Oh yeah, you know, you, you know, you, the Outkast and stuff. Like when everybody was doing funk and hip hop, Outkast was still doing Outkast. Yeah, you know, but you know, it's even still though, it still has some funky shit. Yeah. that Crumbling Herb song, yeah. remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was funky. Mm-hmm. That was like a West Coast feel to me. I gotta say something about Andre Three Thousand. He's a he's a very very talented person, very talented producer. But that Jimi Hendrix movie. Was the worst fucking movie oh, I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. Seen. I think I seen, the, like, I seen like the the trailer for it. I okay, know. okay. The trailer got me hooked because he embodied Jimmy he, Hendrix. He kind of looked like him, too. He looked like <laughs> him and he talked like him and he was amazing in it. But how the fuck can you make a Jimi Hendrix biopic and not play one fucking Jimi Hendrix song through the whole movie? Oh, really? There's not one Jimi Hendrix song in the whole movie. The songs of him playing live and performing, he played Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Heart Club Band because the story behind Jimi Hendrix was that Sgt. Pepper's album barely dropped. Mm-hmm. And that was like a groundbreaking album when it, when it came out. Nothing mm-hmm. sounded like it. Everything was crazy. Paul McCartney was influenced by the Beach Boys' Pet Sounds. And he wanted an album to be fucking out there. Mm-hmm. So they, they just released it like that day or that week. And then Jimi Hendrix was the fucking hottest shit out there. Like he, like nobody could touch Jimi Hendrix on guitar, and, and the blues and everything. So when he came out, he came out with a, to a concert. Paul McCartney and John Lennon were in the concert in the audience. Paul McCartney, John Lennon, George oh, Harrison. Yeah, yeah, okay. So they fucking backstage. They learned to play Sgt. Pepper, mm-hmm. and played it for them at the concert. And I thought that was fucking dope. Wow. And that's the only fucking song that they have footage. In the movie of them playing, right? Hmm. I wonder but, why they didn't play any. But it was, it's, was it's called I don't know, maybe I licensing, right? Maybe the license was in there. For two it should have been. How it, the it fuck really you, been. Yeah, how the fuck can you make a a biopic about somebody and not play what the music? What is the best biopic? I'm trying to think. Like, what was the best biopic? Straight Outta Compton was pretty fucking good. Straight Outta Compton was good. Yeah. La Bamba was good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> La Bamba was good. I like La Bamba, yeah, man. La Bamba was La Bamba excellent. Was good. Richie. <laughs> oh yeah, that was that part. And then me. Like the little music playing in the back, I'm like, oh, shit. sleepwalk. So, so what's out there? So, my question is, like, underground punk. Is there underground hip hop out there? Oh yeah, yeah, so yeah. Happened. But I don't even. It's weird because it's not really 100 percent underground anymore. Because people from underground are starting to become noticed and being seen. So now they're just. Oh, I don't know how to put it, but now were you old enough to uh, be a part or know about Project Blow? No. Mm. That, yeah, was, that, that was that was the underground. W- that was the underground at its finest. Yeah, Freestyle mm-hmm. Fellowship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Release what year was this, roughly? Two thousands. Yeah, the like, late nineties, two thousand. Okay. Yeah, because before that was a good life. Yeah, and my was ass was probably it. somewhere listening to Busta Rhymes or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, he was around that time. <laughs> Watching the Power Rangers eating cereal. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It was about, around that time. Yeah. And that's, that was the underground scene in L.A. What about what about bands like? Uh, you know, Rage Against the Machine, yep. Lip Biscuit, okay, so all that crossover, let, mix and match stuff. Let me tell you about that. Now, I fell in love with that shit. I'm not even going to lie. Like, I remember Lip Biscuit, Corn, all them dudes. Like, I really fell in love with that music around that time because I was living in Vegas and there was a lot of white boys around there too. So, you know, that's all they played and that's all I listened to. Linkin Park, all of that mm-hmm. shit. I loved it. Like, I, you know, Man, let, you can tell me shit. I bought a red hat like like Fred Durst. I thought, <laughs> I thought black red Fred Durst. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's just like it, it's to me. I know that that genre is kind of gone from you know for the most part, but they they really found like Red Hot Chili Peppers. I love the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Mm-hmm. You can't tell me shit about the Red Hot Chili Peppers. <laughs> wait, wait. Let so, me somebody. try. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I love Red Hot Chili Peppers, man. But like, see, yeah. it, it crossed over because it started going from the rap to the rock, right? But so you know what? Guys were around it at was that always time. it so was it, you, gra- you gravitated toward me too. I gravitated I gravitated towards it because of that. Mm-hmm. I wasn't a huge fan of theirs, mm-hmm. but I noticed how hip hop and all these shows like Public Enemy 
Anthrax was with them, mm-hmm. right? So they kind of merged hip hop. Mm-hmm. Cypress Hill too. Cypress, Cypress Hill. Hill. So they they mm-hmm. merged that culture mm-hmm. because they were on the same label. Yeah, Earl Smith and label Run DMC. gave it a try. The mm-hmm. labels gave it yep. a try. Mm-hmm. See, they were scared at first. They were like, "Shit, you got these metal guys, then you got these hip hop cats. Let's give it a try." And it it worked because mm-hmm. Public Enemy was like, "Holy shit, how the fuck are we gonna perform with these cats?" Mm-hmm. And they they sung their song. Mm-hmm. So the labels are like, "Fuck, we got something here." Yeah. After that, that's when Fred Durst and man, they, and man, all they, these guys came out. Because it, it, it started it, way before that, though. I mean, you look at the Beastie Boys. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, a good yeah, example. Yeah, 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 a lot of rock elements. Joe was yeah. saying, what was it? Uh, yeah, Errol Smith and Run Aerosmith DMC. Run yep. DMC. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah. that's yeah. what I remember first. But yeah, see, but, but the Beastie Boys scene, came out but see, first. It yeah. wasn't a scene, though. See, that was a try that they tried, and it worked, right? But the scene with that whole corn and Limp Bizkit, it started mending it. And it became for a while like the thing. It is. It, yeah, it died out I, fast though. You really, if you look at the time it scale, it died out fast. Like yeah. from I say from ninety seven. Yes. To maybe ninety nine. <laughs> yeah. Literally, like maybe two thousand one. If you want to push it, yeah. but it didn't last that long. And you yeah. know that's a, a short lifespan. And, and, and you know what? That's kind of crazy how something like that happens. Yet you still have a song like "No Sleep Till Brooklyn." And mm-hmm. it's timeless. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, you know that's what I was trying to get about it with the Beastie Rick Boys. Rick Rubin, man, Rick Rubin. Yeah, Rick genius, Rubin. Mm-hmm. Rick Rubin's because uh, yeah. that motherfucker is mm-hmm. a genius. Yeah. yeah. Who played guitar on No Sleep for Brooklyn? <laughs> Fucking Kerry <laughs> King, bro. <laughs> what band is he playing? Yeah. Fucking Slayer. Slayer. Who got you in the Slayer? <laughs> <laughs> Hey. So all that shit happened before. <laughs> I understand that, you know, like I was saying, like it's an, it was it, it, it was happened. It, it was happened, a come, it, but it, it didn't become a scene though. They tried out and they and they made a fucking hit. Hip hop and rock was already in there. Because if you listen to Korn's first album, it is more hip hop. Oh yeah. Than fucking Cypress Hill's Black Sunday. Oh yeah. Oh dude, even if you listen to that song Freak on the Leash. Doom, yeah, but that's you know what? Very yeah. Cypress Hill. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now that was that was that's true, and that I guess that was intentional. And now, Corn was like the Nirvana of that scene. They yeah. they brought out all that fucking yeah. <laughs> the rap rock because it, it had that vibe. It had yeah. that vibe. It had that very hip hop. Even the the song structure and the composition had a very hip hop, strong hip hop. So, who's responsible for ICP? Insane. Who's responsible for getting Joel into Slayer is what I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> no, like Insane Clown Posse. You know what? What are think, they? When they, I think of honestly. them cats, I think about WWF. I don't know why. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ju- yeah. The Juggalos? I, yeah. Yeah. The, the, you know what? To this day. Insane Clown Posse, they're a fucking novelty. Yeah. Now, now, to this day, yeah. I've never heard an Insane Clown Posse yeah. song. Yeah. Not because I'm, I think they're a joke or anything. I just never heard one. Uh. I'm with you on that one. Like, yeah. I, you know, I, I know Eminem had some they shit have. with him back in the day. But. They have one of the craziest yeah. fucking followings, though, out of everybody. They do. Dude, fuck, it's nuts. It's crazy. They're Tattoos, very, it's fucking very the violent. Gathering violent. the juggalos, dude. Yeah. That's very fucking violent crazy, following. man. I'll tell you, when it comes to composition and flow and, you know, putting the right verses with the right beats and it's the right Eminem, measures. right, Joe? <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> um, in the genre that we're talking about, I don't know. Me personally, Fred Durst is like fucking the shit when it comes to that. I mean, you hear him fucking rapping with Method Man. Yeah. And yeah. just the way they're going back and forth and he's flowing. Up. Yeah. yeah. And they're, yeah. Method Man is like fucking, you know, yeah. fast yeah, and Durst is right on his tail. But why is Durst fucking hated so much, dude? That's the know. quick question. That's, yeah, yeah, that's right. I don't, right. I don't, I don't know, know, but. You remember yeah. when we saw them at Sunner Sanitarium? Tell took, me, tell me they didn't why? fucking steal the show. No, no, okay. He took me. I have a thing about Metallica, and he took me kicking and fucking screaming to that Summer Sanitarium show. And it was Metallica, it was Limp Bizkit, it was uh, Linkin Park, and it was some other... And Snot. Was, no, 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 Snot, no, Snot no. was around. The guitarist of Snot was playing in Linkin Park. And no, no, and, uh, and, and uh, Limp Bizkit. And yeah. uh, now when Limp Bizkit came, hit the stage, now you got all these fucking Metallica fans. The Metallica fans are fucking crazy because they're, be- they're beer-drinking... Fucking American flag waving, titty yeah. flashing, fucking guys, yeah, yeah. you know, <laughs> that flappy that's... titty, Cause flappy, flappy yeah, long flappy titty, Coors Light <laughs> drinking motherfuckers, yeah. you know, <laughs> their titties drop like you drop yeah, shit, okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to to uh, you know, two two tennis balls and a pair of socks, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> bag of nickels and the two socks. <laughs> so when Limp Bizkit, <laughs> when Limp Bizkit hit the stage at that show. <laughs> <laughs> Limp Bizkit hit the stage of the show The boos were so fucking loud mm-hmm. You couldn't hear the fucking band But mm-hmm. what happened? 
what happened is they fucking turned them around because during the third song, everybody was singing, it's all about the he said, she said bullshit in my fucking line, Joel. Yeah. Yeah, and then really? everybody at the really? fucking Memorial Coliseum. Yeah, at the Coliseum, yeah. and he was fucking. And then he played Sanitarium, and then everybody's fucking. This went ape fucking, shit. They they he, they fucking tore it up. That's really? the fucking day that I had the utmost respect for Fred Durst. Yeah. Now, if you go on to like WatchMojo.com or Looper, how they have those top five, those top lists, those top ten lists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's considered in all those across the fucking board of all those fucking lists. He's considered one of the biggest douchebags of rock mm-hmm. and the most hated, the most talentless. Now, to get signed, to get famous, to get to, get to that level, you got to be extraordinary. Even if your album doesn't fucking sell for an A&R person to fucking catch you and pick you up like that, you got to be fucking amazing mm-hmm. yeah. for someone to come attention. And then you got like fucking bunch of people that are working really hard to make sure your music is a success. So when you hear like, oh, I don't like Drama Rama because that fucking song sucks. And there's a lot that went by there. And a lot of people had faith in them. So when Lip Bizkit came out, they came out out of nowhere. And they just, their fucking live shows were fucking legendary. Yeah. I mean, I, I remember and, that. And, and I remember the, that on MTV. And, they always played that shit. Yeah. And what I see when it comes to like like bands like Lip Bizkit, I see the hypocrisy in people. Just because they're a great band. It's just, it's not around anymore. The genre, man, it is. You know, it was like I said, it was a thing that happened at that moment, man. It was just a dying art. It I mean, was, it was, it was like big bag voodoo daddy and the whole swing fucking movement yeah. back in back in the nineties. Yeah, That's 90s. why, like, when uh, um, this oh, whole right ass, this whole <laughs> fucking you know, profits of rage shit came out. It's like, really, dude? Exactly. You know, the like music, saying, the music man. business has been there and done that. You know, yeah. you know what? I I heard that song, unfuck the world, and I thought it was a really great song. And I went on Spotify, and I was really excited that it came out because it's a winning combination. You have Be Real, you have fucking, you have, uh, what's his name from uh, Public Enemy? Yeah, Chuck, Chuck D. D. Chuck D. Chuck D. Yeah. You had fucking, you had the Cypress Hills Cypress fucking. Hill, yeah, be Real. Yeah. yeah, and then um, you had Rage Against Machine. That's a fucking that's that's a that's a home run right there. Yeah. Just 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 having those people in a room before they play music, it's a fucking home run. And the album was not good. Mm-hmm. It was not good at all. I mean, it was just yeah. like, I felt embarrassed for them. Well, it some just bands don't mash like that. Dude. They don't. It's, just, it's one of those yeah. fucking, yeah. there's too many good ingredients. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's just, you know, <laughs> I, I, I get. Listen, pig feet and yeah. peanut butter and jelly. I, 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 never, <laughs> I never got into it. <laughs> I never really got into hey, it. And I get what you're saying. You're absolutely right. You got a bunch of fucking heavy hitters, you know. But it's a fucking super group is what it is. But there was nothing special about it. It's nothing at all. And nothing. you know what? Audio Slave was a better band. <laughs> See, I could do Rage. I could do Soundgarden. I can't do Audio Slave. Know. You know what? I could I, I was like that for a while and then I started listening to the, the music and and it's just okay. fucking great. Can I ask you guys something? I'm sorry. Yeah, no, go ahead, brother. Go ahead. You guys are talking about all this. One thing I did notice in around two thousand and ninety nine era. And this will bug me out. Okay. And it, it's 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 sort of weird, but Landon what? finally did the Sneeberg. <laughs> that is so fucking weird. <laughs> <laughs> what did you guys think as Hold a, as a, a picture of this? <laughs> no, <Instagram>. no evidence. <laughs> as a as as you guys came in the metal scene, you guys came in the punk scene and all that, right? How did fucking get used to this shit? You don't. Hey, <laughs> my eyes are watering. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it smells it smells great though. It clears up your sinuses. It, well, it, you know what else yeah. smells great? Tylenol three. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> Tylenol three smells awesome. I'm a little late on the. Uh, <laughs> I want to get your views, both of you, as okay. far as like this whole thing that had started happening around that time. I tripped out on it, but because I didn't, I wasn't ready for it, and eventually I kind of, it kind of, I just, I started kind of accepting it, but. When you guys, what you guys think when you guys first started seeing DJs up on stage with the metal bands? I thought, oh, was, like with the limp, the limp yes. music, because they had a DJ. Yeah, like what happened there? Like I, I it threw see, me off. But. I liked it because I remember um, one of our friends before Rick, Rick, he wanted to see their band have a DJ in it. Mm-hmm. Now I thought that was fucking. That's kind of a weird fucking combo. But then Incubus came out, and I'm like, oh, it actually fucking fits in real well, dude. Mm-hmm. 
I liked it. I don't know. I don't know about you guys, but I didn't. I didn't notice it like that. I didn't notice it to where I put some thought into it. I saw it as like, oh, he has a DJ. Oh, that's cool. Hey, that, that actually works. You know, I mean, it wasn't like DJ metal. No, it wasn't anything like that. It was just like, oh, oh, they have a DJ. That's cool. Like Incubus was one of the one of the first mainstream groups to have a a DJ, and the way they incorporated their their music with the DJ and the, the scratch was more like a percussion. Then it was like, like Slipknot was another big one. Now Slipknot was a little more heavy on the heavy side, and I'm like, well, this is interesting. I mean, the, you got a band like Slipknot, and they come out with their, their new album, and there's nine guys in that band. Wu Tang. Yeah, the, they were the Wu Tang. The white Wu Tang. <laughs> <laughs> They're literally the Wu Tang clan of metal, mm. and they had like like they have a, the multi percussionist. Really, they have DJs, they have two guitarists, they have bass player, and and, uh, and the, it works. To a point where, like, you don't even notice they're there. That it it contributes to the sound. It did. It does. Cause even like touching on like the Limp Biscuit with the Nookie song, right? You hear the, mm-hmm. and that's like the back. It's like the background for the yeah. yeah. And then even with the, yeah. he had the NPC on stage and yeah. you know, they, they hit the little pad. I was whatever. just gonna say that. Mm-hmm. I was just gonna say yeah. that that it was not only just the, the turntables. It was the whole experience of a DJ of a hip hop. Act. He had the MPC, he had the records he was spinning, you know, and he had the laptop. I mean, it was everything that was there, and it was contributing to it like a, like a second instrument. Well, yeah. nice thing about having them too in between songs, they're not fucking not dying of boredom, or the singer doesn't have to sit, you know, stand up there and talk, like a little intermission. They actually yeah, yeah. play some music. I, I thought the band uh, for me, I, I thought it served its purpose in whatever band you know, whatever band had a DJ in it. Mm-hmm. served its purpose for that band but i think the one that really gave it justice was lincoln park i think they do i don't me personally i think they made the best use or showcased the best use of a dj for that style of music i think even even like when you're talking about bands like raging Against the machine i think lincoln park was a little bit more hip-hop influenced than all those bands and that's why it, the use was was more like it worked more in that band than it would um Limp Bizkit or or Slipknot like it, you <coughs> listen to songs like um uh what is it um the whole album of uh, Hybrid Theory Hybrid Theory is mm. fucking yeah I mean it's, it's all phenomenal the second one was what's the, what's the name of the second one the that is the second one. Hybrid <laughs> <theory>. <laughs> right, right. Oh, what was it? Oh, Meteora is the first one. Yeah, yeah. Meteora is the first. Yeah, Hybrid Theory. Yes, I agree. It was very, very hip hop. From the fr- from the first yeah. song. I mean, even even the the construction of the chords of the guitars was a uh, very hip hop, you know, approach like to it. That song uh, that I was talking about right now, "Somewhere I Belong," just the beginning. You know, I mean. They come up with some really cool shit like that. You, you know? guys remember seeing them at the whiskey? Who? The good park? Yeah. Really? But they we were saw under them the, at the summer sanitarium. No, but they were un- one time. They were under the ba- under the name Howard Theory. Hmm, really? They used to play with two hit creeper. Hmm. Then we have seen them. Yeah, we've seen them. Yeah. And we didn't know who they were. Hey, did you ever get to see uh Chester when he was at the uh airport at all? I, I, you ever I seen probably it? did, but I probably walked the other way. <laughs> because the reason I ask you guys that is that when I seen that scene kicking in it reminded me a lot of Miles Davis when he tried out hip hop because that's when he started going into that realm where like you know what he's he's one of those guys that never played his old shit yeah he was always he was always going forward he yeah. was the Howard he's forward pushing yes very, so very. I looked at when I looked at that whole DJ thing it's like I, I almost envisioned Miles Davis bringing in his freaking um, trumpet to play a hip hop beat with the hip hop cats yeah I mean Miles Davis was a guy that 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 pioneered beat yeah, So that's the reason I, yeah, he started jazz, a lot of he started know? a lot of so I, I look at the merge behind that from that because you got the most influential the most influential music in the in the nineties in the hip hop era, you know? Yeah. And that's when um Miles Davis back in the sixties, seventies and eighties, all of a sudden he transformed into like the hip hop art. And that's when he died, you know, he actually left the world trying out something new and it, w- it was amazing how like i started looking at chester 
he tried out something new. He I'm brought in the the, you know, from Lincoln Park. You know, that's how he died. He he made, he kind of brought that scene in with the hip hop and rock, and all of a sudden he left that legacy, and everybody started doing that. I don't like you said that he started it. He was one of the ones that Lincoln Park was one of those that started that whole DJ thing. And then they like, weren't the ones that started it. It was in music already, but they're the ones that made it work. Yes, better. Yep. Yeah, they're the ones that I I thought made better use of it than anybody, and it's and it stands out in their music. Um, yeah, Limp Bizkit too, but I think I think it's more. It was more in your face, and and it served its purpose a whole lot better because of the style that Lincoln Park wrote and composed music. Yeah, because I it was it was it was a uh, it was. An extra, it was an instrument in the song instead of being oh, and we have a DJ. Yeah, and that's the way go. I seen. That's that, the way that's I exactly seen. What that's I'm the way I compared my, my Miles Davis. See, people used to sample trumpets. You know, they used to sample trumpets from old. You know, yeah. the old old school cats. They used to bring records from you know Blue Note Records, Impulse Records, and CTI. And then when when Miles Davis came in the scene, he actually made hip hop with his actual instrument. Yeah. Similar to what DJs brought into the rock, yeah, they actually brought their instruments, and then you started hearing it, as opposed to, oh, you know, I know this guy that plays this shit. So then, so that's the kind of comparison I made when I when I started seeing that scene kicking in. I'm like, damn, this is crazy. How this is happening? I, I embraced. I liked it. You know, I kind of embraced I, it. You know, I like to reach a little further back. I think, um, I don't think it was the Limp Biscuit. I don't think it was the Lincoln Park. I think honestly, I think it was the Red Hot Chili Peppers. They 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 should start like in the early '90s. With the hip hop and rock mixture together. Well, you know what? Like I said, hip hop and rock started with the Beastie Boys. It started with Rick Rubin sampling it, guitar it was, riffs. Yeah, it was really heavily influenced. Um, but then they, they walked this way, the Run DMC stuff. Yeah. And um, but to me, when it was really used as the like a front man, and they're mixing like the live instruments with the like the because. Uh, Anthony Kiedis, he was he was trying to spit like although it was kind of weird and it was different it was you know but they mixed they made funk and you know rock funk punk that's yeah, what they funk were punk, yeah. punk yeah <laughs> and they <laughs> worked with George Clinton yeah. you know George whatever. Clinton See, the same thing there were yeah. there was already there was already bands out there that were established that had that sound mm. like Fishbone mm. is what do you guys think about um, Sublime Sublime's mm, great fucking mm. phenomenal they didn't get to band. Uh, it sucks because. They didn't get to have the success that they could have. Yeah. I knew this was somebody. Had. It had to be somebody from Long Beach to talk about Sublime. <laughs> 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 no, but you know, I, I think of Sublime and um, what what made Sublime great is that with all that music that was coming out was coming out ska, and then fucking you hit fucking Sublime. Sublime came out of nowhere, and it was like NWA meets reggae meets meets uh, meets rock meets punk rock. You know, and it, there were artists like the No Doubt too. Like they had that same like little reggae tone yeah, the in their sky. music. Yeah, the sky. You know, and I I think Bradley Noel was fucking a magician when it came to that fucking style of music, and his I, voice. I think he perfected it. Yeah. I think everything that he brought to it, it, I I would say he's the king of that fucking genre of music. Because well, no, there was no other genre. There's nobody else sound like that. There was like bands like the Dirty Heads. There was bands like Long Beach Dub All Stars, um, and fucking Sublime with Rome. The one thing that there was missing out of all those fucking groups was Bradley, and Bradley was so fucking hood. He wasn't even white. <laughs> <laughs> he was something else, you know. That guy was fucking hood. He was like fucking Easy E. He was like the Eminem. Oh fucking reggae. <laughs> <laughs> no, the Eminem of reggae. Yeah, he was the he was the Eminem of reggae. You know, like because yeah. he would talk about like. Oh, well, one more secret lover that I shot dead. You know, like like fucking lyrics like that made it made it separate from mm. other other artists. He's real talk, street fucking talk. You know? Straight ghetto. You, you know, know, like that that song on April twenty first, nineteen ninety two. Yeah. Yep. And all that shit is not some fabricated bullshit. It's all street. real fucking talk from the street. You know, growing up in the hood. Nothing's more ghetto than a white guy from Long Beach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the, they went to Jordan High School. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, with Snoop. You're right. By the projects. Hung out with the, hung yeah. out the yeah. Crips yeah. in the blood. Yeah. 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 Like, like when they were, the All-Stars were playing tomorrow. Yeah. Like, uh, like the uh, when uh, Jesse James cheated on Sandra Bullock with that chick with the tattoos and the mm. Nazi hat. I would tell everybody, I go, he's a white guy. That lives in North Long. The group in North Long Beach. What the fuck did you expect from him? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's right there. <laughs> it's Dennis. Yeah. And if you're in town tomorrow, 
Long Beach Double All-Stars where we're playing at the Veterans Day Parade. Oh, shit. Yeah. Nice. I just saw that earlier today. I'm like, oh, shit. I heard they, I heard that was one of the nastiest breakups ever. <laughs> Long Beach, Dick. What do you expect? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> everything, less, so, everything other than a shooting, Dick. Yeah, I'm so glad. <laughs> All right. This, um. Wind it down. Oh, I just wanted to say I'm so glad you brought up Blad- uh, Bradley Noel, dude, because that dude did it all. Mm-hmm. He could float. He could rap. He could fucking sing. Yeah, his voice. He had a, he he had had a, really a voice. voice. Yeah. See, he Joel, Joel can, now lives in Long Beach, so he feels the right he, that he could talk about Bradley Noel. He can, he can you know. <laughs> when he moved to Long Beach, he got the Pendleton. He was, <laughs> <laughs> it actually was hanging. In, yeah, I see the LB. I'm like, <laughs> it, was, it was hanging in his closet as a welcome to Long Beach. <laughs> 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 I remember a lot Dude, of people in Long Beach used to wear black. You gotta li- you, yeah. now. You gotta look like Jesse James. Uh, what is it about? <laughs> black hoodie? Yes, with that baseball you know cap and the Pendleton. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I say uh, uh, thanks to Landon for coming down. Hey, this won't yeah, be the last yeah, time. Man. I'm gonna come back. It's fun. You All guys right. want to yeah. You guys want to say something about like about this whole thing about hip hop? Like, what did well, it mean to you guys? Because we didn't get into that. Like, what did you it know, mean we to could, you? We like? should do a part two. But no, um, for me. It, Hip hop, hip rap, hip hop is everything. You know, um, growing up, that's all I listened to. You know, of course, you sprinkle R and B, but that's like hand in hand. So, um, but if it, it raised a lot of us, you know, raised a lot of us, and you know, to me, it's inspiring. I could, I could sit back and work out and listen to hip hop. I can get try to get creative and and get in my zone when it comes to photography or whatever, and listen to hip hop, and it'll, you know. But I just hope that it will. Exit the dark ages right now because this shit sucks. I'm not going front. It rides in waves, brother. It, 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 it'll come back again. Mm-hmm. It'll come back full circle and it'll come back even stronger. Yeah, and just keep the Kendrick Lamar's and J. Cole's just to, just to keep it interesting because yeah. if it went for them, it'd be some real bullshit out. Yeah. yeah. You know what I just thought about? What? So we already have brought in somebody that knows about hip hop. We didn't even bring in somebody that knows about country, dude. Mm and that would yeah, not be my black ass. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to know? <laughs> hey, boy. <Yeah. laughs> no, you're right, though. I like that that you say that. It raised you because it did raise me. Mm-hmm. I could have easily been listening to some other shit, but it raised me. I mean, that buying the first Run DMC tape. Mm-hmm. You like, know, the thing about it, like, hip-hop to me was, it, it was like, hey, you got to listen to this. Not like back then where like everybody kept their shit to themselves. Dude, hip-hop was always like brought out to everybody. I just never opened it. Never opened <laughs> up to it, dude. Yeah. I know for me, it was part of my upbringing. You know, I got into music at a very, very early age. And those uh, albums I mentioned earlier, that's pretty much what turned my ear onto that style of hip hop, you know? I have yeah. a question, though. What turned your ear onto Slayer? <laughs> 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 so, yeah, you know, you grew up in the hood. I mean, that's what you're gonna. That's what you're gonna listen to. That's yeah. what's circulating in the hood. Yeah, because so. you know, straight up, you know, North Long Beach and being around mm-hmm. different type of crips and yeah, you know, but it ties everybody together. Mm-hmm. You know, even the nerdiest of the nerds, the, the hoodest of the hood. Like one thing that we all can have in common is the appreciation for the hip hop and rap. Yeah, you're just music in general. Yeah. You know, I yeah. think it raised me in in every form. Mm-hmm. I actually was, you know, I, I started doing graffiti. We were really young. Mm-hmm. That was part of the hip hop experience I had also. Not just the music. I started doing graffiti when I was like 13, 14. Right. So I embraced it. And right before that, I was listening to the rap already. Mm-hmm. I gave a try at the hip hop, you know, b-boying, break dancing. Mm-hmm. You know, tried my, tried my hand in DJing. So I, I, that actually raised me. Mm-hmm. You know, everything I owe to life is hip hop. Mm. I, w- I grew up in, I grew up in Huntington Park. And I, my house sat in the middle of two major gangs of that city. And I was between that and, and my sister and my nephew, Tony. Um, it, was, it was not forced on me, but it was just blended into my musical palette. And I think that, you know, in me, I'm like really into poetry and, and poets. And that was just a different expression of poetry. Yeah. To me, and and, and that's why I, I I looked at not, not not like you looked at the DJ of the beats. I looked at it in the lyrics, and how creative, you know, it would be, and how like they could tell stories and rhyme at the same time. But imagine a world with no hip hop. 
You know what I mean? It's, it'd be it'd, it'd be totally different. I mean, but see, yeah. you're now listening to the Garth Brooks podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're, you're listening to uh, Afghanistan Radio. Yeah. Yeah. You have any shout outs you want to give out before you go, dude? Uh, you know, I know my wife's gonna listen to this. So, wife and my you know my kids and um, you know at the end of the day, just anybody who appreciates music. You what know. about like a, you got any Instagram account you want to yeah put out? Yeah, um, he's also a photographer. Yeah, I'm a right? photographer. Oh, nice. And um, thanks for telling us in a three hour podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be some information we could have used. You know, it, they were cut out in the beginning. We would have told him beginning. So <laughs> they were like, oh, he's a photographer? Fuck. Yeah. Get out. No. It's like, Hello. Welcome to. Wait. This is Landon. I'm photographer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, I'm a photographer. And, um, you know, and, and I have dabbled in the music, you know, um, <clears throat> NPC. But I have NPC Studio, but that's what I was, you know, that's um, good. better in Fruit Loops. But, uh, <laughs> like <way> <laughs> but um, yeah, so my Instagram is uh, at Landon Lambo. It's uh, L A N D O N L A M B O. And that's, you know, but I'm on most. And that's your that photography I, account? Yeah, it's my photography account. You see my work, and, um, you know, I have more posted up. I have, what, what do you like shooting? Fashion. Yeah, mostly fashion and. Um, High fashion? Somewhere in the middle. Okay. You know, uh, but yeah, high fashion. Uh, yeah. It, like it, 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 it's a difference. Yeah, you, it, you, it's you. Very, it is a difference because, you know, with, with high fashion, you need a team. And but and then sometimes I like to get with models and just shoot some shit by myself and keep it real simple. No makeup artists and nothing. You ever try landscaping? Landscape photography? Because that's what I like. Yeah. I like you, you know what? I have. There's just too many fucking artists in this room. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, the only thing Chris knows how to do is drop shit <laughs> <laughs> and shit in my pants. <laughs> oh, he's a Picasso, dick. <laughs> <laughs> you spray it all on the walls. You get you guys <laughs> from the windows to the wall. <laughs> you guys hear about that photographer actually shot? Um, he used to put um, ink on the toilet, right? And then he used to flush it, and it spun in those colors that he made. He took pictures and he exhibited it. That's dope. <laughs> I never seen that, but I'm gonna look that up. Uh, forgot his name, but then he said he goes, "I'm gonna go, I think, to Europe because they say the toilet spins Connor, the opposite." Yeah. So that was his. I don't. He probably did it later, but Andy, he was tired about it. Yeah. They Andy Warhol used to have people pee on fucking litmus paper and fucking have them as paintings. Hmm. That's yeah, cool. I remember people that. People pay top dollar for that shit. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna take the shit on some paper and rub it on the model's face, and we gonna make this yeah, shit yeah, happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be some shit. Yeah, that would be some shit. <laughs> And call your work corn. Eat. <laughs> Scat. Eat. <laughs> Eat nothing but corn on the cob for two weeks and then take a shit on Tina Marie's chest. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, so we, we still have shout outs to do after this. So okay. we're just going to say our buys. And well, I'll be back. Well, well man, it was, it was good meeting you. Go you go yeah, I'm oh. cool, man. Go for it. Don't forget your complimentary zote. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Smells pretty good too. Yeah, it's just not wrapping it up. Okay, it's so you want to do you want to do you want to do comments? You know, we got one comment on the new website. We have two comments actually. We haven't given a shout out to. Uh, okay, and they also have um, Dweeb Kid. Just followed us. He says thanks for all the. Thanks again for all you guys. This won't be the last time. Doing for. Everything we're doing for the community, that's what he's saying. What was it? Yeah. And it's uh, yeah. the community of... All right. All right, All right let's say goodbye right. to Landon, people. All right, All right brother. Take All it right, easy, man. man. All right, then, y'all. Cool. Remember, his Instagram yeah. account is at Landon Lambo. Yeah, this, is not, this will not be the last time I'm here. Yep. You know, I, I, I look forward to it. This is fun. I don't know. We All want right, you man. back. We're, we're going to get him in, get him in the polka cast. Ooh, and we're back. That. We're back. I gotta read the comments to this thing. Shout out to MC Boulevard. <laughs> you know I what? remember you, homie. <laughs> he has fans like Insane Clown Posse has fans. Let me tell you, he has a big following, dude. Because I mean, these these uh, these comments are very heartfelt and genuine. As much comedy as I think this fucking song has, <laughs> people take this shit seriously. It's not bro. the song; it's a video that we saw, dude. It's not even the song. Amen. Homeboys to my right, Hina's left to let it. F- what, what does it say? Chris is left to no, no, no. Homeboys to my right, eat the mic. Hina's to my left, feed me. Or like we said earlier, man. Like last podcast, there's an audience for everything. Yep, exactly. You know, like this wasn't my type of shit. I didn't tell you that. Maybe it's I like, heard it, but I I wasn't grabbing. I didn't go and buy his shit. But it was there was people that loved this shit. Back you know then. what? This is the double amputee midget porn. <laughs> Of rap right here. 
it's a very specific genre. It's very yeah. niche. Yeah. Like MC Boulevard, and they have like the, the what was the real one? There was a couple out there. Middleman Ace, and then. Well, Melamine is not. Nah, it was more di- it was different. Lighter shade of brown. Lighter, Lighter brown. shade of brown. Okay, I admit it. I went to go Cali see That's all I remember. I went to go Spanish see him at Magic, J- Magic Mountain, man. <laughs> I went to go see Lighter Shade of uh, Brown up there. What are the those 90. other guys? The ones that sing. Da 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 Melomanate. Delinquent Delin- habits. Delinquent oh, habits. There you go. There you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. That, that see that that was in the same era. I mean, same genre though. No, no. They no, were no. more hip hop. Like, yeah, they're they're, they're, more they're straight more hip hop. This is this MC. It's hip hop, but it's it's just something different, man. It's like straight like hip hop for that's trolls. That's just that's just straight up. You know, um, I'm a crazy fucking bato. I'll see you on yeah. rato. You know that type <laughs> of shit. So, you know? so it's uh, East LA soul. Yeah, because you had, you know, Psycho Realm type of shit. You know, there was free hip hop, Cypress Hill type you shit. You know what? I fucking. Who the fuck was I arguing with? Somebody was talking shit about Psycho Realm, and I'm like, dude. How can you do that? Psycho Realm was brilliant. They used fucking Shakespeare. Dude, Psycho and Realm. And their fucking was first shit, album, dude. dude. That's dope, Psycho dude. Psycho Realm, you can't fuck with them, man. They have the biggest following, man. What's the name of that? What's the name of that song that's part, they had part one, part two, and part three of La Conecta? La Conecta. Oh, that fucking song is fucking brilliant. Yeah, dude, that, that first album was... And you know, um, back in 95, I believe, mm-hmm. we actually performed with um, Psycho Realm. Before really? They, they, before they made it big. And um, it was Psycho Realm, it was Tumex, <laughs> and Slow Pain. And um, that girl V, what the fuck was her name? Um, something V. I don't know. Anyways, um, yeah, dude, and the fucking Psycho Realm was there. Dude. Like they, like when Duke was there, and, and you know, Sick Jack, and they didn't really had a big. They were barely coming out, man. And you know what? I, I, with all the people that are sounding the same with mumble rap and all that other shit, and and, and the, the fucking trap, Sick Jack, and I was a fucking shit. really fucking original rapper. Yeah, dude, his uh, his own unique voice, man. Yeah, nobody sounds like that for. Yeah, and with and his new shit that came out, man. Amazing. It's a, it's Dope. the in, it's the embodiment of, of everything that was good about rap back in the yeah. days because no one sounded like anybody, yeah. and that was considered an insult to be like, "Hey, you're biting that style." Yeah. They had to like you, you, you like when Shine came out sounding like Biggie. Yeah, you know that was like, "Whoa!" What the I fuck think did you do. I think Slick Rick and Dana Dane are the only ones that had a fucking pass <laughs> or yeah. the whole thing because nobody said shit to yeah. them. They were the shit. But you know they, they were the only ones that were like kind of similar. Yeah, that a similar style. All right, so I guess we should move on to shout outs. Yeah, it's a shout out outer. Okay, so I, got a couple. I just looked up MC Boulevard does not have an Instagram account. <laughs> <laughs> I think but. somebody shot MC Boulevard in like 2002 <laughs> on Pico Boulevard. No, he's still around. <laughs> they, they, I found a video on him. He was like at the San Fe Spring swap meet or some shit. I don't know how long ago that was, or if you know was there. That that sounds like his crowd. He yeah. sounds like he sounds yeah. like a guy that would rap about Zodis. <laughs> <laughs> you know what though? I did find a Boulevard MC. It's a motorcycle club. Yeah. So, a gang. <laughs> oh, shit. so uh, if if you're out there, we're not talking about you guys. You guys are a great group of guys. Don't shoot us. We're talking about Master of Ceremonies Boulevard, not Motorcycle Club Los Boulevard. Vagos. <laughs> <Yeah>. Los Vatos. <laughs> but I remember you, homie. Okay, we have a new Instagram account. It's at La Clica Podcast. Please like and follow and, and check out the nice pictures that Rick has been so kind enough to <laughs> share with the world. Let us know what you think about those. Leave a comment. <laughs> we also have our website and then our social media from Facebook as well. Facebook is uh, Podcast One. Of uh, uh, Facebook, La Clica One. La Clica One. Mm-hmm. The number one. The yeah, actual digit. The, the yep. number one, the digit. Yeah. And we're on Twitter too, right? Yeah, we're on Twitter at La Clica Podcast. We're still not active on it, but we have it. <laughs> and uh, we did get some Russian listeners. So Shout out! I, nice. I wish we had a way to Duh. translate this into <laughs> Russian, but all I can say is "nasadanya." Nasadanya. That means goodbye. Duh. And thank you for uh, listening to us. Yes, yes, we really appreciate all your listeners, all your downloads. We appreciate them all. Keep listening. We'll keep working harder. But please. Leave us those comments. Tell us what we're doing right. Tell us what we're doing wrong. And comments lead to shout outs like Gabriel Gutierrez. 13 days ago. Thanks for the three red thumbs up. 
I think we said this on our last one. Yeah, and he also wants to be on the podcast. I double died. Dare you to come down. Also, uh, Darwin, three days ago, said, Hello, Moses. Thanks for partying the Red Sea at LBC. Anybody know who that is? I think that he was using it as a Moses, like, hey, like, we're Moses yeah. and we're partying the Red Sea. Yeah, I kind of figured it. Not that I'm, like... I don't know if he's anybody you guys any know. Any godlike, you know, like, we're godlike. It could be the real Moses. He probably could have <laughs> came down and gave us fucking real commandments about podcasting. We're fucking them all up. Our, 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 he's probably the the, Mo, the Moses from MS-13. I don't know. You got to be more clear on it. Leave another comment, man. Let us know what we we're talking about. Moses is from F thirteen, dick. Yeah, the Moses from F thirteen. It, it could be a different kind of thirteens, <laughs> you know. Like we all MS thirteen. It could be a V thirteen, or you know, shout out to all those guys from Moses that are named Moses. See, and, uh, so we have Omar Huerta, one of my homeboys, said, "Dope fucking podcast, great conversations." Thanks, Omar. Thank you. Thank Omar. you, Omar. So, Omar. No, most are gonna give Thanks, him. Thanks, Holmes. <laughs> he actually um, Did you guys see that little bottle I have in the bathroom The Jack Daniels soap dispenser like He's the one that gave that to me dude fucking dope. He makes those he has, he has an Etsy account All kinds of stuff It's pretty badass dude I want one he, he, Hook yes. me up Yeah dude Let me him. know Hook me up I'll, 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 I want a Schneeberg soap dispenser I have to, I have to look up his Instagram account I want one I'll put no, it Seriously right I really want one um, Also shout out to Dweeb Kid On Instagram Just followed us Going to start listening today Thanks again for all you guys are doing for the communities. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing a lot. I, a lot. I, we have a we have a 4K a, fun a run coming lead. up at the end of the month. <laughs> 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 Let me try to find Omar's. Uh, what are we shout out to Paul for finally following us on Instagram, <laughs> and Nate and his fucking extra testicle. Shout out to Eddie Torres, the extra <laughs> testicle, Nate Sack, Rosado. And I got one on mine too. Um, shout out to Social Savages. They said, this is dope. And they're, uh, they're actually on another podcast out there. They said, this is dope. So yeah, thanks for listening, guys. Shout, shout out to Bundy, wherever you are. <laughs> 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 shout out to Gandhi and Nelson Mandela for the very, very <laughs> kind words you sent us. <laughs> I really appreciate that. And and the dope Pope, Pope Francis. And really? here's uh, Omar's Instagram account. is bleak underscore art 36. Okay. He's a photographer. He, he makes leather goods. He makes soap dispensers. He's a well-rounded artist. Yeah, and shout out to all of our new listeners, too. We've had yeah. uh, 200 new listeners in the past few days. Nice. Shout out to Hollywood's Barbershop on 4th Street in Long Beach. Shout out to my homeboy, Oscar, my barber, and my other barber, Eddie. And to Artie and Alex. You guys are the fucking best motherfucking barbers around. See you guys uh, during the week. Shout out to Ariana Contreras Morales. She loves the shirt, Rick. On the, the Morsi Facebook. shirt? Yeah, on the Facebook The one that post. Chris should borrow for tomorrow's show. <laughs> now, I'm going to wear a Slayer shirt for tomorrow's show because we wear <laughs> Slayer shirts. We wear Morsi shirts at Slayer and Slayer shirts at Morsi. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that was the deal, yeah, right? The deal, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Shout Holy out to my shit. barber. He's actually on Seville, so we call him the Barber of Seville. What the fuck <laughs> is this barber you guys are speaking of? I don't fucking know. I mean, he started with it. I, I just realized I needed a haircut. Oh, and... Uh, oh. We'll be talking to uh, Long Beach natives, uh, punksters, Sloka, tomorrow. You'll be talking mm-hmm. to Sloka. I'll be at Morrissey. Yeah, me, Rick, and uh, Bago here. Mm-hmm. Perfect. All nice. Right. All right, guys. We're signing off. We're Suck it easy. Suck it easy. Bye. <laughs> Bye.